What is going on, everybody? It is episode 341 of Pop Culture Crisis. My name is Brett. I'm here with my co-host. Would you introduce yourself, please? Hello, Crisis Actors. It's Mary. Happy Friday. We are... You might be winding down for the weekend. We are high energy. We were having heated debates up until the very moment that the, we went live today. And it's because we have a special guest in the studio. Hello, Matt. Hi. Thanks for having me on. I'm very excited. We, we were getting into it, so I'm excited to get back into it again. Tell everyone who you are. Uh, I'm Matt Battaglia. I have a new book called House on Fire. It's a graphic novel. Uh, we have copies, too. And yep. you guys have copies. Everyone has copies. I got my copy. Um, Thanks to Matt Kivy. Yep. Yeah, my yeah. boss. I work for Free the People. Um, so check us out there, freethepeople.org. And yeah. Excellent. We'll the this. link uh, to House on Fire is in the description, by the way, guys. P please buy it. Uh, please. Please. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Please. Do it. Uh, <laughs> and we also have Chris Burton in the studio. It's come on, the Burtoning guys. today. We, we all know why we're really here today. Yeah. <laughs> Just to celebrate the Discord Burtoning. Uh, actually, I am I'm here to tell you that I am Team Half Armenian Charles. Oh. You hummus lover. Yeah. <laughs> you hummus lover. You hummus loving I, I degenerate. Don't, I don't. Are they known for hummus Armenians? It, it's kind of like a Middle Eastern thing. So yeah. like I'm Jewish hummus. Uh, yeah, no. Know. Okay. I was just checking. I, I just, I like hummus. Don't get me wrong. I like hummus. Who doesn't? I just hate Armenian Charles. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he helped me with my taxes. So. Well, He's going to help me with my taxes. So I got to reel in for uh, Butter him up a little bit. Get yeah, your, right. get your taxes down. <laughs> exactly. And then after tax season, just go back into him. <laughs> yeah. Screw that guy. Yeah. Remind him he's related to the Kardashians. <laughs> exactly. Show him shame. <laughs> We got a bunch of stuff to talk about today, not just the burtoning, uh, the, the growth of the burtoning movement on the Timcast Media Discord. We have topics such as Matt Battaglia's book. So we are going to get into the book. We're going to talk about you. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff involving the process of making that book. We are also going to talk about the gender wage gap strikes again, ladies and gentlemen, even during a zombie apocalypse. You thought you had you... heard the last of it. No, no, like a, like a zombie risen from the grave to crawl down and, and grab Bella Ramsey. She is making... Well, it's more like a fungal <laughs> infection, yes. right? Yeah. Uh, we're uh, talking about The Last of Us. Age gap, too. I yes. mean, come on. Ageism. Yep. Big right. time. That, well, they, they mentioned that in the article. <laughs> Basically, Bella Ramsey made a hell of a lot less money during the making of The Last of Us, and people have a lot to say about that, so we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about Donda Academy, because Donda <laughs> Academy just seems lit. That's as, as we said earlier, we're bringing back millennial <laughs> terms. Seems lit. Yeah, there are a couple of ladies who used to work at Donda who just launched a lawsuit in L.A. against the school, against Kanye. Um, but in doing so, they just made the school sound kind of awesome. It does it does seem pretty much breaking incredible. so many health codes and <laughs> Department of Education laws? No chairs, no desks, no nothing. Just sushi and art. That's all it is. That sounds yeah. like heaven. <laughs> that's yeah. what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna talk about that. We're also going to talk about the fact that Demi Lovato seems to have been snuffed, snubbed by Disney, not allowed to appear in this 40th anniversary promotion for the company. Uh, a lot of people believe this is in relation to the fact that she has leveled allegations against members of Disney. Disney for very, very bad things that we can't actually say explicitly here on YouTube. So mm -hmm. we will get into that. And also there's another article involving a lady named Carol G, which we may or may not have time for, but I actually, me and Mary had a, a, a pretty interesting discussion about the concept of Photoshop. And I know that Matt has thoughts on Photoshop and when does Photoshop go too far? Well, there's an ethical discussion about it. Then, I mean... I how much? How many pounds are you allowed to shave off of a person before they're no longer the person? That's that's a fantastic. And question. as a practicer of Photoshop, I mean, yeah. you should have some scruples. Yeah. You can remove acne here and there, but I I don't know. It's not fair to be like just changing yeah. a huge whole human. Yep. So we, we will talk about that. Uh, also, we're going to get into a couple of articles starting the show. We're going to talk a little bit about Star Wars, stuff like that. Uh, but before we get started, guys, could you hit the like button? Could you subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already? Turn the notification bell on so that you can be notified any time one of these live streams or a new segment goes up. Uh, also, remember, $20 Super Chats and over. We will interrupt this discussion right off the bat, and we will address whatever your question, comment, or concern is, and then we will do our, our level best to get right back on discussion, which is not easy. Uh, I, I will point out, there's been a couple of times recently like we get done with the Super Chat, and I'm like... And then you got to try mm -hmm. and remember what that is. So uh, before we get into it, I say we just go right into the, the early discussion topics. Mary, are you ready? I'm ready. Matt. 
Oh yeah, ready. Let's go. There you go. That's, that's my line usually. That's my, that's usually my line. All right, guys. A lot of you might have already seen this, but Star Wars Celebration brought about a bunch of news about the already flailing enterprise that is Disney Star Wars. And the number one thing that people seem to have a lot to say about it is that they're wondering why the hell they're giving Ray another movie. Thoughts? I mean, she's there. She's uh, available. So, somebody made a really interesting <laughs> observation. They said maybe what they can do is make her popular again, so, sort of the way that Spider-Man No Way Home made Andrew Garfield Spider-Man cool again. Yeah. I said no. Andrew they Sp can't do no, Garfield no, Spider-Man was good. The, like those, the first one was good. People, people like uh, a lot of people. I noticed a lot of posers being like, "I always loved those movies." Um, no, you didn't. I, I legitimately lying. remember enjoying that one the first one or the or the second one where it's like, i think the second one they overstuffed it yeah, yeah well i mean that's but, what they did with yeah. uh, uh spider-man 3 yeah toby mcguire yeah. spider-man right. 3 which was, was also thing, way which overstuffed yeah, Nine thousand characters stuffed into a two and a half and i really movie. liked the gwen stacy stuff what's her face mm -hmm. playing gwen stacy was great yeah. yeah and uh for that one i was like i don't know if ray is really the same thing as andrew <sighs> garfield there's a lot more time between the two and the landscape is just different marvel inherited you know took over spider-man via basically leasing the character and had a lot more right. goodwill than Disney's Lucasfilm has right now. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I also wonder, did the 10 year olds who saw the force awakenings actually connect to those movies? Is that's who this would be for, right? No, their grandfather's connected to them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The original trilogy. Yeah. And, like, and I don't know. And their dad kind of connected who, to them. Who I just, did anyone like those movies enough that they're going to go see three more of these movies? I mean, it seems like they're pushing everything to streaming anyways. Oh, that's, that's true. That's where, where, so it's just it another product that they're going to sell yeah. in one of the five shows they also announced. And, and how did you feel about Dial of Destiny for Indiana Jones? I, so I am an Indiana Jones shill. Okay. Uh, it, Harrison Ford looks happy to be there, which is usually Rare nice. for him. Yeah, yeah he for, does. These it, days. He collected many a paycheck in yeah. reprising Han Solo. Um, but uh, I, I don't know. I feel like they're going to kill him, and that's a depressing thought. That's but not a good I, I will go see it. And we've uh, got one ooh. from is that Nep 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 Nep. Uh, he said Bert. Bert. <laughs> <laughs> Bert, what's your opinion on Indiana Jones? I've never really. Seen, I think I maybe saw uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark a long time ago. Jeez. I just it this never is the beginning of your heel turn. You haven't seen <laughs> Indiana Jones. I'm not against it. I will watch it. Yeah. I you just, also haven't seen Star Wars either. Right? I haven't. And the older I get, the more people react like that. Yeah. You haven't seen Star. The more I want to say, I'm not going to watch. Well, it Well, that's how I feel about uh, Back to the Future. Never seen it. And what? I, I have. Yeah. See. I have taken a strong stance. I'm never going to see it. See, this is one of those things I talk about yeah. a lot on the show. I oh say, my God. In, yeah. in, in the world of pop culture, there are certain opinions you're not allowed to have. And people will tell you that's not true. But you're not allowed to not like old Star Wars. You're not mm -hmm. allowed to not like Back to the Future. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed <laughs> to not like Star Trek. Like, there's things you're just not, you're forced to like because right. the, the culture tells you that you have to. Yeah. And I just say, no, I will like whatever. I, I literally got so like annoyed by this the other day that I posted like one of uh, Comics Matter, your boy Zach's videos where he says, I will like whatever the hell I want to like, and I will hate whatever the hell I want to hate and screw you <laughs> yeah. if you don't like it. Bite My, me. But, but the thing is, isn't it, I'm not, I don't want, Bert doesn't have to like Star Wars, yeah. but yeah. it is sort of like to a- see it. You, you should maybe see it. should But what's mandatory it. viewing? Because a lot of people would say Back to the Future is mandatory viewing. I'm sure it is, but now I'm you being- You haven't a, watched it. I'm a stubborn jerk and I Yeah, just, and uh, like, it's also one where- <laughs> you probably have to watch it as a kid for sure to probably see yeah. the charm in it yeah. As much. yeah also same with star wars though like i wonder if you're never seen it like going back and watching it was like nah another thing that the reason why you should go see them is because because of the the step down level of writing in hollywood now yeah. like 90 percent of the witty dialogue will make more sense because most oh, yeah. of it is pop culture references to these franchises yeah, it's, it's before joss whedon like yeah. the originals are before joss whedon everything became whedonized and it's all everyone sounds the same it's uh, all terrible it's, <laughs> it's what i love about old buffy is that the the show doesn't have those pop culture references so you're right. watching whedon before whedon infected his own projects with that with that type of why storytelling why do that uh, that, that's a fantastic question. I don't know if he felt like he was writing for more adults when he was younger, um, and now he's writing for like those same adults who have baby grown adults, up. Yeah. yeah, like who haven't grown up. But I like his his writing on Buffy and his writing on Angel. Granted, I think 
uh, Greenblatt did more of the writing on Angel is far more uh, evergreen, meaning that it's it fits the tone of the story and it doesn't feel like you're constantly being brought out of it every ten seconds yeah. for a joke. He's also writing his own thing, yes, like which is a huge difference. Like I, the thing that drives me nuts with all the Star Wars stuff yep. is just these are just people who are now just stuck inside the Star Wars machine and they're not going to create a single original thought now. Yeah. And, and like James Mangold did is, I, uh, just got, you know, is now one of their directors for, for eternity and his movie Copland with Stallone. I don't know if you've ever seen it. No. Incredible. Oh, it's a, and it's a great. Oh no! Yeah, yes, I have. Okay, it's yes. Stallone, Ray Liotta, yes. okay, Bobby no, D. Never mind. I was, I, I was great thinking movie. of uh, Get Carter. And, oh, ah, another. Also a great movie. Another. Great, uh, well, yes. the original, the Michael Caine one is great. I don't. Yeah. I've never seen the Stallone, but Copland was great. And Mangold's never going to make another Cop, Copland at yeah. this point. He's just going to be making stuff that's based on things that he probably watched when he was twenty. Look, Logan. Logan, Logan was, was good. Uh, Logan but... was good. Uh, but it's saying that I'm not annoyed now because now they're bringing him back. They're, they're bringing back Logan to yeah. Deadpool, and I don't need it. Like, yeah. I didn't need them that was to the continue. Period. Yeah, I do, they didn't need to continue making those movies. They got an emotional ending from a genre that doesn't get a lot of emotional endings anymore. <laughs> they don't get endings, period. Well, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a fair point. Sucks. Like, things don't end. So they got an emotional ending out of a character, and now they're going to bring him back, and I just didn't feel... And people got mad at me when I was like, I, I don't know if I need Deadpool 3 with, with, no. uh, with Logan, because I don't think they need to bring back... Uh, him is I don't uh, they don't need to bring back that character for with the same actor totally agree so that's that was just my take on it uh, also uh, if you were wondering how things are going for Star Wars the Mandalorian season ratings have in fact been crashing uh, Mary even even Mary posted about it the other day saying that <laughs> looks like Gina Carano dodged a bullet uh, someone said that this episode of The Mandalorian looked like an insurance commercial <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't agree more well they shoot them all on those flat um the the LED screen like yeah. it's all it looks oh, flat. wow all of it is right. fake and then there's yeah. just it's it's Lizzo being Lizzo Jack Black soy facing at Grogu it's all just a shadow of what it once was bring back mommy Gina <laughs> well because it, they're not going she's towards not gonna any come ending. back though. they're just they're not they don't shows. deserve that <laughs> she just, doesn't deserve that they're never gonna have an arc because they can't have it end because it's the hub show. They're going to make you watch other shows based on yeah. watching. Everything leads you into something else. Yeah. Nothing is just an end point. Now, I think that's why I go back. Like I've been spending my Saturdays watching old action movies because there's a beginning, there's a middle, and there's an end. And when I'm done, I can just be done and I don't need to keep going. I watched uh, Hitman, the Hitman movie based on the video oh, game wow. recently. <laughs> I don't need to see Hitman Agent 47 with a different there's actor. Is a movie yeah. based on that game? Yes. yes. It's, it's oh, not. It's, yeah. And it's very, like, it's got Olga Kralinko. Isn't she, Timothy Oliphant? Is, yes. Uh, he's yeah. the, with a shaved head. Yeah. Uh, we got... Uh, Oh. A two right there, and one's a big one from Nep. Yes, big super chat from Nep Nebs. He said, "The self-proclaimed king of pudding shall give my crown to Leader Bert." <laughs> Wait, so is and he then we've the got another one from Johnny Beck said, "Have a blessed Good Friday, all." Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Wait, it, so does that make him the king of pudding, or you the king of pudding? No, he's the king of pudding, and he's, he's giving his crown to you. Pudding. So yes. you're now that the pudding king. I guess so, yeah. Thank oh. you, Pudding. Shout yeah. out to Pudding wow. in the Discord. Thank you. <laughs> nice. Okay. Like, okay. every time I check in on the Discord now, it's, it's people talking about... Oh, 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 there we go. Do you know this movie? I, I, didn't, I yeah. can't even understand. Anybody? Funky butt loving? Funky butt loving. Funky butt loving. Uh... This it's, is a deep cut, Brad. It's I think in you the back of my that. brain it's somewhere. When you made it. It's, uh, it's from the movie Rookie of the Year. The, oh. the baseball movie uh, oh, from man. the 90s. Wow. That's a deep cut. You're, okay. Like, yeah. you're, you're guys are both old enough. To yeah, no, I just movie. don't remember. Who was in it? Was uh, it was uh, Gary Busey. Oh. Gary mm. Busey was in it. Uh, like he, he's like looks like a wild-eyed maniac playing well, baseball. It's incredible. He is a wild-eyed maniac. And that's what we love about him, right? Gary Busey, uh, <laughs> Lethal Weapon. So everyone, should, everyone should go watch it. All, the 90s was the time for sports movies, but baseball movies in general, whether you're talking Field of Dreams, mm -hmm. Angels in the Outfield, Rookie of the Year, Little Big League, uh, Hello, Sandlot. The, the mighty Sandlot. Sandlot. Somebody, got, somebody yeah. got very mad the other day when I said that the Sandlot wasn't my favorite 
baseball. They got mad. Yeah, like in the dark, like, that's the best of all time. I'm like, it's good. It's really, really good. But <laughs> Little Big League is a movie based on the Minnesota Twins. Therefore, I have to like it. Okay. Also, <laughs> all, all, it, culturally, you know, and also no, and also I wear a lot of hats. I'm not today, mm -hmm. but my other, I wear Twins hats and I wear yep. Seattle Mariners hats because Ken Griffey Jr. is my favorite baseball player of all time. And in that movie, he gets to play a dick who just hits home runs and is mean to everyone. And that's See, I don't, I don't get you because I went to plenty of Durham Bulls games. It doesn't mean I like the movie Bull Durham. Why not? It still sucks. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, uh, I will say that the I find the idea that uh, of making a movie like in in little bit. I'm sorry, in in Rookie of the Year, he gets hurt and he gets to play baseball that's interesting the idea of having a kid become the manager of the team is more interesting to me okay okay like it, it's just it's not a straight line big richie rich to the fan. kids i love richie rich <laughs> that, that, that's fantastic too all of that was great i'm just saying it's not as straight of a line to the kids fantasy like every kid uh -huh. wants to play the sport professionally how many kids grow up wanting to manage the team <laughs> not a lot so. well that was a whole genre of movie of like kids becoming adults weird like Blank Big, check. Blank check. Perturbed check. alpaca said it's okay to be wrong, Breet. I, I I mean I'm I'm a relativist. <laughs> I'm a relativist. I'm not wrong. That's I, your new nickname. Yes. Breet. Breet. That's horrible. Ooh. I like that. No, it's I guess it's better than it's better than Guys Brent. latch on to that. No. Yeah. I like that. Oh my god. It's better than Brett. It's better than Brent. Brent isn't a real name. It's Breet. fake. All right, guys. So the ratings were bad for the Mandalorian. Also, oh, that's what we were if you about? saw yeah. this, Kim Kardashian and Northwest TikTok have apparently been banned. Now it's just Northwest's, right? At oh, first, no. people were reporting that they deleted it of their own accord, but they actually were banned. I mean, they did break TOS, right? Uh, you can't make a TikTok account if you're under the age of 13. And this yes. girl is nine years old, dressed up like Ice Spice on TikTok, dancing, uh, pretending to be an adult, uh, There's singing one more there. sexual lyrics. From Nep Neps Nep again. Neps. Oh my God. <laughs> he said, oh, and join the Burt cult. <laughs> Jeez, Burt. Pudding, oh my God. Look, I, I have to be <laughs> Team Armenian Charles. I have to, he helped me with my taxes, he, okay? Uh, I get it. It's uh, it's the way. It's like nobody likes doing taxes. It, everyone hates no. doing taxes. Yes, it yes. is theft. It's, and and every, as everyone knows, Based. I have my, <laughs> I have my photos of various celebrity tax heroes over here who have valiantly stood up to the federal government Hell by yeah. not Hell paying yeah. their yeah. taxes. Yeah. Wesley uh, Snipes. I got a. He's, he's, a he's there. He is a hero. We have Wesley Snipes here. Oh shoot! He actually has him. I have him. I thought here. he was joking. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> you have, have to. He I is. Have, he stood up to the tax man. Hell I haven't yeah, gotten man. around to hanging these up yet. Hell yeah. I have. You need a right. demolition man, Wesley Snipes uh, picture. I have. Well, I have that picture in my room. Yeah. I, I have. I have a framed demolition man <sighs> art piece. One of the best we have movies. Nicholas Cage. Uh, he hero. did. Yep. Well, we have. I mean, they all have. Yes. Yeah. If we're being honest. Chris Tucker. Nice. Okay, I remember Chris that. Chris Tucker. And. Uh, Willie yep. Nelson. Wow. And of course. Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay Lohan. Wow. Was, uh, Hard my, throb with Lindsay Lohan there. My birthday twin Ooh. being a July 2nd birthday in 1986 as well. So yeah. I got to hang these up eventually. That was like Teenage Awakening, sign, Lindsay Brett? Lohan. I'm a cancer. Re okay. Mm. Um, but uh, there's, I also have one of Martha Stewart, but I haven't framed that one yet. <laughs> uh, but she went to jail she for She did real it, time so. for she it. She did real time. Yeah. That's what it is. Uh, okay, so do you think that for, for Northwest that this is appropriate, that they should be banning her because she shouldn't, uh, the North shouldn't I mean, have the account It's anyways? quite literally breaking the yeah. TOS, and children have too much unfettered access to the internet anyway, yep. and we all know it. There good is a new for one. them for but, upsetting the CCP. Oh, uh, Hugo Jesus said, did you guys hear about the mob that frightened Riley Gaines? Are you guys going to discuss this later on in this live? I'd like... Love to hear your guys' inputs or thoughts. Love you guys. We could we could just drive by it really quickly. It's not really pop Say guys culture. one I, more time. I, Say I, it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I just wrote about this actually Did earlier. To Riley Gaines? Yeah. 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 yeah uh, it was, I uh, saw the video. I don't know Twitter. what, happened. what um, happened. So she was speaking at the University of San Francisco in California, of all places. Bad choice. I am from California, and I can tell you, yeah, the story makes sense. Um, <laughs> Checks out. <laughs> Checks out. She was speaking on um, rights of women in sports, and a bunch of transgender activists kind of mobbed her, shouted her down. They they assaulted her, according to what she says. Um, you know, Is I, it I, on there's camera? a video. there's a couple of videos of yeah. it, and then so she, they ended up uh, barricading her in a room. The yeah. cops did for safety, you know, mm -hmm. and um, they were outside. And it's one of those things where it's like if you ask them, they're joking, but in reality, it's like no, I don't think you are. Oh, wow. Second oh, crisis yeah. party, oh, ladies geez. and gentlemen. Thank you, guys. Oh, I'm fired. Uh, Riley Gaines, we support... Uh, we support
support Riley Gaines. Yes, yes, yes we support yeah. Riley Gaines. They wanted to hold her hostage. That was the point. Oh, so that they're joking. No, no they're not that's joking. Not joking. They're not joking. No, they're being serious. It's like when they they say that it's not assault to just get in someone's ear and scream as loud as you can. Oh, come on. It's just a reason. joke, bro. Yeah. It's just well, that's a what prank. they always mean by like speech has free speech has consequences. Oh my God. Jeez, you gotta reload the money machine. Yes. Did I do that? Yes. Well, the bur the burtoning did that. Yeah. All right. The cool. Did that. We we're in the How presence have you of the so pudding king. How successfully built this cult of personality? Dude, like, I don't like, know. Like less than two weeks. I, uh, actually, that's uh, actually I, I would come up with an answer. I don't think a cult leader is supposed to not have an answer to something, so you should better come up with an answer. Well, I feel okay. like that no, happened that gives in more high power. school where people would kind of rally around some random yeah. guy, and it would be funny, but he was like not sure why it was funny. Yeah. Do you, so you feel like that right now? A, a little bit. I have, like, I appreciate that it. It's awesome. multiple times when I was in high school to just random dudes. It's like, okay. You yeah, really uh, just cheered when they walked in. They, people still, and they, I get, guarantee you those guys still think about it to this day. Yes. Yeah. Do they feel good about it? Or, <laughs> that's I bet you. It's like the high school football player who like never grew out of it and he's still watching high school games and he's 40 and he's yeah. just sad. <laughs> yeah. That's like the high Yeah. So yeah, but Bert, this is what this is going to be for Everyone you. Everyone cheers okay. Bert, 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 but are <laughs> they asking how is Bert? Yeah. That is a right, nobody question. asks why is Bert? Or why? Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys remember the target, uh, the damn Daniel, that guy? Yeah. And he just became a meme? Yeah. That kind that of feels bizarre. like how it is. Like I was just in the Discord, people were joking about my name and I was joking along with them and all of a sudden it just took off and I was like, whoa, guys. And then... Um, I didn't. I didn't tell him to stop because <laughs> it was they're, funny. Because you love power. Because yeah. <laughs> so I love power. This is why power dictatorships corrupts. are a bad idea. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, we got one from uh, Perturbed Alpaca. Money gun go Bert. <laughs> yeah, I said that yesterday, and somebody goes, "Did somebody say Bert?" Uh, I love that. <laughs> All right. Uh, so for Riley Gaines, let's uh, you know pray for Riley Gaines, yeah. right? Because that's yeah. uh, what you're taking on is a very, very scary thing right now. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. All right. Also, uh, Mary brought this one to my attention. Apparently, Jennifer Lopez is being slammed because she's launching an alcohol brand, despite the fact that she doesn't drink. To which I say. I, that doesn't bother me. I mean, from the headline, it calls her sober. So I assumed that she used to be an alcoholic and then launched an alcohol brand, which would be really weird, right? No, I don't think so. You don't I, think I, that's weird? I, I think it would be weird. You I mean, can't I, test your I product. Think, yeah. I think it would be bad for your for your sobriety. I think it's a horrible idea. Launch party, everyone's drinking but me. Yeah. But, um, you know, like... How do you vouch for it? If yeah, how do you vouch for the product without, if you can't Does anybody it? actually believe that Ryan it's about uses Mint Mobile? It's yes, about the principle. Okay. I, I had not... Mint Mobile and he left me voicemails, He's... okay? Ryan Reynolds <laughs> did not use Mint Mobile, I guarantee it. And the service was perfectly good for 15 bucks a month, okay? It's, uh, <laughs> and, and this could be, you know, maybe she just really hates her husband right now and Ben Affleck is in recovery and she's just like, hey Ben, want to try this? Shouldn't they be in their honeymoon phase? Yes, they should. Well, this is their second honeymoon phase. Well, it's so. like your sixth honeymoon phase. Yeah. But, well, hers, but <laughs> this it's... is their second go around together. Together, yes, right? it's um, they get drunk and watch Geely together. <laughs> That'd be cool. What yeah. I don't like is when someone has been divorced like a thousand times and they say it's because they're a hopeless romantic. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen it multiple times. On it's the show. like it's like you can pivot and make anything sound good <laughs> yeah. if you if you're if you just have enough words and you're just vocabulary. looking for the right one. Like, look, like, I've just been uh, I'm just uh, I just means you me. fall out of love just as easily as you fall in love. <sighs> All right. Beware. Uh, um, but also, she is stealing Negronis from Italy. So, okay, explain yeah. to me what the hell a Negroni is. Well, it's gin, Campari, and vermouth. It's a drink. I but know like Campari is, I think, what they're... It looks like that's what they're kind of, like, taking on. Okay. And it's a delicious drink. Highly recommend. Great in the summertime. Um, it makes sense that J-Lo would want to make those kinds of beverages, but she's not Italian. I thought this is 2023. Like C Cultural appropriation. Yeah, that's appropriation. <laughs> See, uh, but I thought food was where it's supposed to be exempt, right? Like you're allowed I don't to think be that's like a... I can't keep up with the rules. You, did, you guys did get burgers and sushi from, from the same place. Yes, that's but. true. <laughs> Culture ticks. They said, uh, here's 250, guys. Ha ha. Wow. <laughs> just kidding, guys. It's just a prank, bro. <laughs> Bert, it was nice of you to invite Brett, Mary, and Matt to co-host PCC. P.S. You should try to get Melanie Mac go boom on PCC from Discord oh. user Kent Pittsburgh. Yeah, Thank Melanie you. Mac's cool. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I did reach out, but you guys should go like harass her and ask for us. Like, why haven't you answered them? Yet? Yeah. yeah right? Answer like, Mary's email. Yeah. She's super based. Yeah. It's uh. <laughs> 
I remember her her video where like people got mad at her for wearing like a. They said she was overly suggestive in a PlayStation hoodie. Yeah. And people were like, what the what the hell? <laughs> it's, it's, the internet's full of weird. The coomers. Just, just shut up and watch the video, guys. Yeah. Yep. PlayStation hoodies are pretty sexual, though. All right, guys. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm I'm driving right past that one. I've got no such comment or any opinion whatsoever on the sexual nature of a PlayStation hoodie. Um, guys, if you remember the other day, I, I, we were going to cover this as a topic, but we didn't. Uh, in which Meghan Markle and, and Prince Harry have proven to not actually be as noble as they say because they give exactly one hour a week to a charity that they start. Oh, there's a $20 one right there. Uh, Nep Nep said, I find the lack of burtoning disturbing. <laughs> the burtoning How can we increase the burtoning? The burtoning oh will God. continue until morale. Do you have any burtoning. suggestions? Yes. I don't know. <laughs> um, let so, it happen. <laughs> so what it was, guys, is uh, the... Meghan Markle and Prince Harry give exactly a week, an, an hour a week to their charity that's uh, worth like $13 So million. what do they do? How do they help people? Uh, What's nobody their knows. Like, uh, I don't get much done in an hour. Every Like if I worked one hour a week, this nothing would ever happen. You'll watch like no. eight minutes of a show in an hour. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, exactly. <laughs> the, guys, they're making fun of the fact that I have the attention span of a particularly stupid gnat and mm -hmm. like it takes yeah. me like a day to watch stuff. <laughs> uh, but beyond that, her hour a week has earned her an award from Gloria Steinem in which she won what is called the uh, the Women of Vision Award. Makes sense. I, there is like a whole industry where you just get to just come up with names for awards. From the Miz Foundation? It should be the Riz Foundation. That'd be way cooler. <laughs> um, but like, like, there's just a whole pipe. Like, these people spend all of their lives, if they're not acting, they're getting dressed oh, up and no. going to pointless award Look, shows uh, and chicken dinners. This Robert sounds dinners. like the opposite of an organization that would represent Meghan Markle. Works to bring attention to the real challenges facing women, especially women of color and low-income women who are living in poverty. Are you saying Meghan Markle doesn't fit that category? <laughs> she did work her way up to royalty and then work her way out of royalty and has spun that into a lot of money, so... Yep. And she she does have a vision. And by her own admission, was always treated like she was white in right. America. So, but then treated like in she what way was... does this have anything to do with her? But no. she was very treated poorly by the royals. They did not they're like so her. They're so racist. But there was also yeah. there was I was reading an article that said like the the evidence there there's more than enough evidence that she was horrible to her staff. Uh, like documented sort of by like uh, Amy Klobes. Yeah. Klobuchar? Uh, well, yeah. I'm from Minnesota, Klobber. so I don't claim Amy Klobber Klobber by Klobber 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 Klobber. I mean, that should have been her One slogan. One of her staffers' yeah. memoirs. Her, yeah. Every time she came out for a debate, she should have said it's clobbering time. <laughs> That'd be like, awesome. CM Punk. Uh, we got a super chat from Hugo Jesus. Screw Anheuser Bush. Okay, carry on. Oh, I hear Coors Light's good. <laughs> Yeah. Again, uh, I, I can't have an opinion on this because I don't I, I don't drink. You, but, you like J Lo? Uh, both, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm secretly I'm <laughs> well, yeah, like that, and it's like I'm like yeah, go Dylan Mulvaney. That's that's actually what I was thinking. No, uh, I have no opinion. I have no opinion on any of this because it's like, uh, did you see the picture that somebody posted of Kid Rock drinking a Bud Light with a drag queen at the concert? And like, you can't make this shit up. Oh but my then God. he recently made a video. Yeah, Denounced that's what they're Bud saying, Light. denouncing it. But this is yeah. like an old picture. And yeah. it's back when the yeah. drag queen. If like you've been alive long kids, enough, like, they have true, proof true. of that. Yeah, yeah. You, do, yeah. you do become your own villain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm a Miller Light man if I'm crushing 20 beers in a parking lot. So. Derek Menson yeah. said, we start with taking over Burt culture crisis, <laughs> then Burt cast IRL, and finally oh end God. with the formation of Burtopia. Look, Somebody, I am honored to be on the show that Burt's on. Thank you. I, I mean, Burtopia sounds like a fantastic Disney movie they could have made 20 years ago through uh, the different animation studio. Like, yeah. They could have yeah. Yeah. Done like the Pixar could have made a movie called Birdtopia yeah. in like yeah. the 90s. Right. Birdtopia would have been done by the guy who did Five Goes West. Or Zootopia. Yeah. Yeah. Like Zootopia and Birdtopia is just a spin off of Zootopia. Somebody took the pop culture. The logo, yeah. or I guess the one you guys use, and they just put Bert, Bert, Bert. <laughs> I saw that. I saw. Oh that. my god, yep. the memes are incredible. I'm like, oh man. <laughs> All right. And you wrote a review for me. I I feel bad, guys. Matt's the guest. No, <laughs> but I mean. I mean, I knew you'd You're be an important. essential worker here. I'm an essential. <laughs> we've got that. We've Job also security. Guys, yeah. we, if it doesn't make you laugh enough that she's getting an award, we also have a a, a crisis. That's party. another one. Wow. We also have a cringe of the day. Yeah. Do we not? Oh, oh, oh. 
My, my favorite part of my job is making the crisis parties. It, it really is. Your favorite part of your job is funky butt loving. Yes. They're, <laughs> they're fantastic. Quote. quote uh, you can clip that. All right, guys. We, have cr we, we do, in fact, have cringe of the day. Mary, are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Let's go. Yeah. For those listening, girl harasses Gaston at Disney. Secondhand embarrassment. You're done. There are children. <laughs> the okay. female privilege is real, ladies and gentlemen. Does, is yeah. that, I mean, the female groping, privilege is real. Is that groping, though? Because it seemed like she was just like... Briefly laying her you, hands on his chest. Could you do it to a, one you of the female not, cast members? You do not well, touch the talent. Boobs, Mary, Mary. So that's I mean, a little different. He's got a plenty of a wait, wait. Let's, chest play, let's let's live replay that. Okay. I, I need to reevaluate. Yeah, I mean that's. She didn't just lay her hands on there and look at him. She grabbed. Yeah. Her hands were clenched, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Grabbing what? He's he's She's flat. violating strip club <laughs> ethic. You don't. You, can't, you, you do not touch. touch the talent. I think he had a long day. Keep the hands to yourself. He's got the hyper masculinized yeah. chest and shoulders yeah. going on. I mean, he works hard for that chest. Works exactly. Yeah. Aesthetics. Oh, probably. There are children. There's children uh, around. Yeah. Well, okay, no. This is a fair, fair. point. Is the idea here that uh, the kids learn that it's not okay for boys to touch the girls, but it's okay for the girls to touch the boys? Someone There's children someone around. Someone just chatted. She squeezed. She definitely squeezed. She squeezed. definitely squeezed. Is there proof that she squeezed? Also, in keeping with his character, he, like, he wouldn't allow a woman to just touch him. Ever. He, he would touch... Isn't Gaston like uh, canonically gay now? I see. I don't know. I didn't that happen? Yeah. I see some compression. Did it happen in the here? 90s I'm, or was it no. 2000s? I'm playing it in slow motion. I'm seeing some compression. I think some there was squeezage. definitely a squeeze there. Yeah. There was a honk in there. There was a squeeze. There's, yes. Like, it's I'm one thing if it was rested. The, the Gaston moves. Yeah. Yeah. Look, uh, we can't, we cannot teach the ladies there that it's okay to touch the boys and it's not okay to People touch the girls. The, because otherwise they're going to end up in a talent? world star yeah. hip hop yeah. video yeah. where they end up hitting their boyfriend no, and then that, he that gets only her. happens at Toontown. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, true. Yeah. But people, yeah. people harass the talent at Disney City. all the time. Like, especially Peter Pan. Oh. I've seen lots of videos where girls just, like, harass the Peter Pan. Really? Well, and, that, and that's yeah. not good either. That's bad, too. Yeah, you're not allowed to harass the... Harass the town. Bad look. No, All right, guys. Bad look. We are gonna we're gonna get started here. So Matt, I yeah. want to talk oh. to you. I, like, <laughs> yes, we're we're off of the squeezing chests. We're off. Are, of the, are you sure? Yes. Uh, are you ready to talk about your book? Uh, oh yeah. Hold it up. Oh, show it to everybody. Uh, it's a graphic novel, and it's actually dystopian. Yes. Yes. Legitimately and so. In a world now where dystopian in a literature world <laughs> where dystopian literature isn't very dystopian. Isn't very at all. dystopian. Uh, uh, we yeah. have an actually diver uh, an actually dystopian story. Yes, it is. Uh, do you want to tell us about first of all, like how you came to writing a comic, uh -huh. uh, a graphic novel? I drew and what it too. Inspi and, and drew it, and yeah. what inspired you to do so? Um, well, uh, I've always drawn comics since I was a kid, and sitting around my house during lockdown and terrified of the future. It's the only thing I did could do to like process what was going on. So this was written during COVID. I did the whole thing. Basically I wrote the outline. I did a road trip from Philly to Texas with my dad and seeing the difference between what was going on in Philly throughout the rest of the country was pretty, uh, uh, stark. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and so I wrote the outline. I had drawn a few pages. I'm sorry. We yep. got one oh, from what Nep is it? What's it say? B1 with the Bert. One of us, one of us, one of well, us. Well, and I am one with the Bert. <laughs> yes. The Bert I, I, wrote the first review of house on fire. Yes. And, yes, he did. and it was wonderful. And I didn't know a cult leader was going to write about my book <laughs> and I'm very happy that he did. It's fantastic. Honored. Seriously, guys, where, pick it up. Thank you. Bertopia, where <laughs> obedience is your only refuge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, where yeah. fear is rational. That's four. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, PTZ camera. Uh, tell us about, like, if you were to give, like, a short review for it, what would you, how would you? Oh, like man, it? a short review. Um, <laughs> so this was something in the back of my mind when I was reading it. When you, when, when there's stuff that comes out that's kind of it talks about real life problems real things that happen you remember wonder woman 2 when it was like no. he's he's supposed to be trump and you watch the movie and you're like yeah. no this is what your delusional idea of trump is guys right when i read this i kept thinking to myself like it's fiction it's dystopian 
but like not really almost, yeah. you know, the whole time I'm reading, I'm like, yeah, I, I especially being in California, I, I saw these kinds of things happening, yeah. you know? Um, so that's the thing that I, I, I think modern fiction doesn't really capture is the human experience. Yeah. No, it, it, and you know, the reason why I had to make it uh, was that I, and I, I didn't think, wasn't thinking about it while I was drawing it and writing mm -hmm. it. But afterwards I realized like, oh, I haven't seen anything about what the entire world went through this horrifying traumatic experience where our governments locked us all down and, you know, destroyed businesses, families, uh, you know, you lost loved ones. You weren't mm -hmm. allowed to have a funeral. It was mm -hmm. awful. And there's been no art made about this yeah. thing. And so we have like the bubble, right? Yeah. <laughs> which there's it, it just treats it with none of the seriousness of like the yeah. pain that anyone I mean, To be felt. fair, uh, I do think it's actually a, a very like tough road to go down. A lot of TV shows incorporated COVID and I hated it. Well, I hated because it's, it. Yeah. it. Because they incorporated, incorporated it as if it was normal. Yes. Yeah. It, like that's the problem is no, this is yeah. the, 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 all that new normal bullshit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it, this isn't good and it's yeah. not. And, and, and so to me, it, you you have to have some sort of cultural record of what went on, yes, and what's what could happen if they take the power back again. I, I there's a scene where um, the the sort of border guard pulls yes. up the temperature reader, mm -hmm. and and I, I mean you it must have happened to you in California, oh my God, and, yes, and, and it happened. I went to like a concert and they were doing it, and yeah. it's like really this is yeah horrifying and 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 we've got another one yeah. from oh. Nepneps. i'm sorry to, to break up it. the tone no Nepneps is great he says now for an official message from the past king of pudding yeah. everyone is amazing and deserve all this money <laughs> man money bags Thanks. pudding shout out to pudding that's uh Thanks, Nep -Neps. It's, Nep -Neps is so great this, so this is how scientology <laughs> came to be like like that's what happened right? well like, it cost a lot of money to join scientology yeah I, but you're gonna need to get with half armenian charles though to figure out your tax situation so you can turn it into a write-off otherwise the scientology thing won't work i gotta reel it in for you, the weekend yeah you gotta yeah. make it into a religion right and the next yeah. year i'll have to reel it in again and then you need to get a tom cruise to support you <laughs> exactly so. so you were saying that <laughs> oh what <laughs> uh, you had your temperature read at a concert oh yeah it just um, but mm -hmm. so all of these experiences and things i was trying to filter into the the book but i also didn't want to make something where where you were reading it and you were feeling like being like I was trying to tell you something I think I, mm -hmm. I wanted to keep it broad enough where you could put your own experiences into it put your own life into it um, my youngest sister lives down in like Del Rio in Texas mm -hmm. and she saw a lot of the things that are going on around the border where people would will actually go from Texas into Mexico for medical treatment yeah yeah because it's cheaper so so that's funny she read that into it she didn't even think about it necessarily from the COVID angle and mm -hmm. so I wanted to I did purposefully it's not it's very much about my reaction to what happened, but um, it's not some sort of explicit COVID mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, you don't mention COVID at all. It's no. Well, it's a different disease that is obviously, I mean, I'm not saying this yeah. to minimize the seriousness of, you know, anyone who got COVID and did uh, die from it or, you know, had a serious health complication from it, but it, you're portraying a disease that affects young, healthy people in a way more serious way than COVID ever did. And, you're showing a society with much more like hard, tyrannical, totalitarian measures being taken than were taken in COVID. Again, not to. That's fine. Thank you guys. Ha not ha to minimize totalitarianism the, in, in death. Isn't that hilarious? It is. Not to, to minimize the totalitarian measures that were taken from from COVID. Right. But um, then you also did a nod to like the soft totalitarian pr propaganda because there's like a poster in the background as he drives by of a yeah. smiling person wearing the mask. Yeah. It's like, stay safe. Yeah. Well, I again, and you driving around. Uh, uh, 95 near Philly it's like there I'm there still are a few of these billboards of like masks vax be Dude, safe or whatever yeah. going to Los Angeles same thing oh yeah you know what yeah. it was here that was is when I first saw like a road sign that said vaccine clinic yeah uh yeah. that was that one, dystopian yeah, as yeah. Well. uh one that's like it, it had to be manufactured yeah somebody right. had to make that in like it in was, recent time yeah. and then be like hey go put up the vaccine clinic sign over there on 280 or remember I've seen all ones like get a vaccine to protect your baby or all yeah. the stupid the, the stickers that they all made that were like stay six feet apart and they yeah. put them on the floor everywhere and oh, that God. in Which that direction 
actually the infrastructure need to walk is right. still present today. Yes. And who is going to peel those stickers off the floor? Who's going to be that guy? I mean, someone like, should. But I always think about it. But like, th this is these are the things where in and um, you're young enough that you probably didn't have to don't remember. But pre 9 11, like there was a huge difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before not b yeah. before and after. Yeah, a lot of them will never understand like airport travel before 9/11. Yeah. Right. Know? And yeah. and and we oh. have to remember what We've we're what's going to taken from us. Gordon Shumway he said if Bert joined Scientology, <laughs> Tom Cruise and Xenu would yield to all, to the all-powerful Bert. All hail Bert. <laughs> Bert, could you plug my book again for me please since you 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 do uh own the entire audience. I, I do. Please pick up House on Fire. <laughs> Am I in camera? Yeah. yeah. By Matt Battaglia. It's fantastic. Um, it's like you were saying, it's like COVID, right? Or yeah. whatever viruses. That's not even the story. The yeah. story is the desperation. Like it literally took me back to that March, April, right when California shut down. My, wa my wife lost uh, two. I think she was employed by three people. So three of her jobs. I was the only one supporting everything. And yeah. I'm just like, I, I don't know how we're going to stay afloat. So like, you know, the story about the husband and the wife. I'm just like, that was like, okay, I get it. That's yeah. exactly how it felt. It, Thank you. It, yeah. uh, it incorporates something that I think a lot of dystopian literature and television and movies have lost, which is the feeling like an unrelenting feeling. It never lets up. There is never a lull in all the things that can and will go wrong yeah. in this type of situation when it's a world of people that have lost all semblance of rules and everyone's out for themselves. Uh, also, the other thing I wanted to ask was like, what mm -hmm. inspired the color palette and the art style? Uh, well, the art style, that's just, that's how I draw. That's just how you draw. So, uh, I it has a very, can't change it. <laughs> it has a very distinct color palette. It has a very yeah. distinct look for inking. So, so I inked it all with a brush. I did it all very quickly. Um, I, I inked every page in about an hour and a half to two hours. Which is and and I went basically straight from uh, layouts to inks, and my hope was to capture some of that desperation and emotion in in the actual art itself. Exactly. Um, which I th I think is you know the line quality it, mm -hmm. something that you can that comics I think does better than other things where you have a bunch of ways that you can communicate something, and just the way that you draw something says says something about the subject absolutely and the color palette is hopefully was meant to accentuate the tone as well mm -hmm. um i like having a tone i didn't want to go full color one uh printing it's ex expensive but um two i think that a full color would make it feel too to Hollywood, I guess. That's, I was gonna yeah. say, it would make it feel overly produced. It would yeah. actually lessen the seriousness of the tone. Yeah, yeah. It, it, and and I don't, it shouldn't, it, you know, I'm not trying to be, uh, the, this book would never get published by like a Marvel or DC. It doesn't even fit in with Image. And so I'm lucky that I have a publisher who, you know, took a chance on it um, because it, I think that I was trying to make something for adults and I don't mean that in, you know, you have to be 40 to read it. I mean, it in it should make you think and feel something. Whereas I think a lot of comics, a lot of genre stuff in general is just product for the sake of product to, you know, uh, take your eyeballs. All the Star Wars shows, they, they don't exist for any meaning or purpose. They don't walk out of them saying, oh, I learned something or I felt something. Uh, and I think that that's a real problem with our culture they've actually gotten very good at manufacturing the feeling that you might actually be experiencing yes. something emotional usually through music yep they they're very good at using score that was wakanda to, forever all the way yeah well i oh. mean it's it's a star wars does that too and any of those mm -hmm. scores you know you hear this soaring score and you're like you almost can't help but your, your oh, the heart last does of us is a big offender in that too yeah I yeah didn't, i like, didn't watch it i was i was watching um like old Justice League cartoons the other night. The uh -huh. Justice League cartoon has fantastic music, and this is on a kid show. Well, so same with the old Batman the Animated Series. Exactly. Was... Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and the like the Batman Beyond uh, intro song, which oh, just yeah. goes way too hard. Oh, it, <laughs> too hard? It, it's amazing. Oh, okay. Amazing. Oh, oh, no, oh, I, I thought you meant it pejor like in a bad way. No, it's incredible. <laughs> yeah, uh, it is. I also want to say, do you think that the concept of dystopian in literature and cinema mm -hmm. and television has kind of become oversaturated? I, or is this kind of it goes in the same discussion as people who say like 
there is no superhero fatigue. There, people, they're just not making good movies. Do you think that there will that there isn't necessarily a fatigue on dystopian properties? It's just not being done very well right now. I don't. I don't think that I would say that. Yeah, I think fatigue's a tough word because it just means that it, you're you're assuming what a crowd is sort of tired of. I would agree that it's just things aren't good. Like the superhero movies, I just I. I'm also, I don't care about the genre anymore. I'm, yeah. When I was a kid, it's different. And there are definitely plenty of con like superhero comics that mean something to me, but they're all ones either A, well, they're all ones by artists that I really like. So there is the, the art factor of it. You know, I'm a yeah. huge Frank Miller fan and his work has highly influenced me. If you'll read the book, I think that that's obvious. Uh, but um, like, there's nothing superhero that's come out in the past, 20 years i feel like that i've really latched onto just because it doesn't after a point like i'm married i have a kid like i it doesn't mean anything none of these characters are doing anything remotely it's like okay big we i liked you still really like weezer okay saw weezer at msg years ago weezer's music has not grown up weezer is all like they're 50 and they're still writing songs about being in high school and going to meet their teenage girlfriend's dad <laughs> and it's like you guys are so far removed from that life and your audience is so far removed who is this for <laughs> um i'm a huge fan of this band the menzingers which is a punk band outside of from philly and they're making songs that actually have aged up with them and I think that's important is to make stuff and make art with where you're at in life and superheroes just isn't that. And I don't think that there's a ton. Well, I meant even, I, I was saying in dysto like no, dystopia, like dystopia, like Sorry, do you I think, went elsewhere. Do you think <laughs> dystopian literature and dystopian cinema? Cause like we watched, we reviewed the last of us Yeah. and uh, for as much praise as the video game gets, the show just felt like it was fun. Like to me, yeah. it was just like, I watched it. It was fine. Mary didn't like it. I thought, Meh, whatever. Like, it's like, I would never watch it again. Whereas uh -huh. the concept of dystopian literature and media used to be something that drew a lot more people in. Uh, I, sorry, no. Nap Nap oh, said Nap you should get back. me on the show to talk about how much pudding I eat. <laughs> how, uh, so back to what we were talking yes. about. <laughs> uh, he, should, he should super chat again to tell us how much pudding he eats. Um, yeah. But uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I don't know that dystopia necessarily has a shelf life. Yeah. I just think that things hit and either they reflect I, the thing that I was going for with house on fire w was to just play out what we all went through a couple more cycles around. Yeah. And I think that there is, there is a little bit of eye rolling that happens with something like the last of us or like the walking dead TV show where it's like, okay, yes, we were the bad guys all along. I yeah. get it. And where you play it out where it goes on for too long and it doesn't end. And um, but I don't think that means dystopian as a genre is done. I think it's always people are going to make sci-fi, people are going to make dystopian. I think that what maybe what we're tired of is remakes and things being the same idea over and over again. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know how the, the fact that The Last of Us has, was made as a game, then remade again as a game. Hasn't it been re remade a third time now? So it was made. And then it had a remaster come out, so it's, okay. it's, it's a light remake. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then they had the sequel come out, and uh -huh. then they had the remake come out. And uh -huh. Now they got the TV, TV show, and then Wait. the TV show for the second. second the remake game. after yeah. the sequel. What is that? The remake after the. Um, they remade the game. So the first game, then they had a remaster, which isn't really. Yes. It's not a remake. Uh, then they had the sequel. Yeah. Right. So we'll forget about that one. Then they made the remake. <laughs> yeah. Of the first game. They remade the first game. They remade the first game after they remastered it a couple years after. Yeah. So and then they had the TV show. So okay. you've seen the the story like three, four times now. Awesome. Yeah, and so, I don't know. So I'm just two, tired of that stuff. We got two yeah, right there. Yeah. Oh, um, Nep -neps. Nep Neps said. So I eat average 200 met metric tons of pudding a day. Holy crap! Damn, that doesn't right sound on. real to me. <laughs> that is a lot of pudding. I believe you. Uh, Dark Lion 53 said, "Hey y'all, long time listener, first time chatter. I just wanted to tell you guys how much I love the show. I legitimately look forward to listening to you every day. Y'all lighten up my work day. Nep Nep, you have too much money. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> such thing, my friend. Wow. No such thing, my friend. It, it, no yeah, such it thing. means more from a first time chatter thank mm. you dark uh dark line 53 that's a i my my the big thing for me in this job is like when i hear people tell me like that they watch at work or something like that because yeah. that's what podcasts have always been to me is like what i would watch or listen uh at work or going to and from places so. yeah back back there was a time when you only had you only listened 
Yes. Well, yeah. now I can, now yeah. listening is is very difficult for me because yeah. it's like it's I don't want it to interpret my like to affect how I I don't want somebody else's opinion on something to inform my opinion on something. So I'd rather go into most of these topics before I hear anything that somebody right. else has to say about it. So, uh, do you think that there is a lesson, a specific lesson to be learned, or would you, it was the point of House on Fire to be more open ended? Uh, for me, it's it's I, I there's probably a lesson in there, but I. I purposely left it kind of open for people because that's six Whew. i think like to me we've had a, an epidemic lately of topics where artists whether we're talking about the guys who made the boys who want to tell viewers how yeah. they're supposed to interpret their art i love the garth ennis com the, the comic of the boys was oh. so funny and ridiculous and insane we uh, got one from got last one. name first name just ordered a copy looking Hell forward yeah. to reading it there got we go so thank you so much right modern on. day media it's just the same rehashed poo poo garbo also poo -poo praise garbo. bert <laughs> thank you thank you uh, thank you last name first name <laughs> yes that is awesome i appreciate so, it i see a lot of creators mm -hmm. uh, especially in hollywood the ones who are built into the machine who don't have to worry about whether people like them or not they seem to want to tell people how to interpret their art yeah i hate that uh the the point of art in it in, in, is that you once you make the thing this is no longer house on fire is no longer my thing it is a thing that the audience should interact with and hopefully enjoy get something out of but that's up to you that's you the individual and i don't really want to tell people what they should take out of it i don't want to tell people what they should think i have a very small afterword in it um just because i would like people to know that a human being made it and all that and i have i'm a person who exists but um yeah i just i i, I hate that it, it, on all these press tours that people do for shows for movies for books they all there's just this constant like oh well this was about trump or this was about whatever <laughs> and it's like this you're removing any ability for someone to actually engage with your work yeah. because you just told everyone what to think. And that's frustrating for an audience member. That's just not how art should work. It, it, you go into a museum and there's always a little placard that tells you what the thing was about. And I always think it's stupid to read that before just taking it in because then you now you just, now you have what the museum person would like you to think about the thing that you're looking at. And I just don't think that's the right way to, to look to appreciate art. Um, it's noted at the end yep. of the book that you became a father oh, yeah. while uh, in the middle of like developing this. So mm -hmm. I guess firstly, uh, can you like speak to how that affected the, the story or of how you would interpret it now versus like maybe when you first conceived it and then uh, also, have you read *The Road* um, by yes. Cormac McCarthy, and how do you think? Uh, it, what did you think of that? Did you? Like I like *The Road*. I like Cormac McCarthy. Um, great book. I'm not a great reader of like word books. It just comes to mind as but something. Cormac is one I read. A dystopian yeah. uh, story that is like mm -hmm. it features fatherhood in a non-negative light. Yeah. So the next, I mean, whatever I make next will definitely more explicitly deal with fatherhood. Uh, I had to finish this before uh, our, yeah. our daughter was born because uh, having a newborn is not conducive to getting anything done. Right. So it didn't really affect the story because it had happened, but it, you know, I was already, I was just writing it at the end. So I, I do all the drawing first. I lay it out without words. So like I draw the entire book and then the last thing I do is put any of the words in because for me, hmm. I, you, for me, comics are meant to be understood with, like, your visual storytelling should ex should get you through the story. You should be able to read a comic without having to read a single word necessarily. And so the words are to add a little color and and life to it. But um, that was the last thing I did. But yeah, ha be, ha being becoming a father has definitely changed some of my concerns. But I also didn't want to put anything negative about having a when i was so there's a scene where 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 he gets uh well i won't do spoil there's a scene in there and then that scene happened to me kind of in real life mm -hmm. and i was worried if i put anything regarding my child in the book like i didn't want to put some sort of negative juju out there in the atmosphere yeah. mm -hmm. which okay. is weird superstitious but uh yeah having a baby does change your uh, view of the world mm -hmm. And it terrifies me more of technology. So the next book is going to definitely be 
That it changes the bad. stakes of everything. Yeah. Oh, for sure. That was going to be my next question: Is uh, will there be a conti- like a, a new story anytime soon? Uh, uh, this is a self-contained story. So, yes. and, and as we keep talking about expanded universes and when stuff, when is House like, on stupid. Fire two? Coming there will out. never be a sequel. When, no, uh, when is the spinoff coming House out? House on Fire there two will not be a spinoff. spin-off. <laughs> and and I promise that my next cover won't have a, the protagonist How about upside House down on, on it. Water. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, um. Yeah, I, I don't know. I have an idea. I know what the sort of over arc, the arc of the next book I want to do is. Uh, I just need to find time to draw it. And I want to make it longer, um, which is a challenge because it just takes more time. And yeah, it's definitely going to focus on technology, our relationship with technology. And my big concern is how do I keep my child like safe from social media, the yeah. internet, tech you can't escape it but how do you create like some sort of healthy relationship with it because you see so many horror stories about what happens to people because of social media because of the internet especially young girls um like back with our with the the swimmer that we were talking about Mm -hmm. she's i mean she's being persecuted constantly i imagine and probably constantly being bullied online and and bullying is probably too light of a word but assaulted so the, it used to be, you know, back when I was a kid, you, when you left school, you left school and it was done. And now it's not done. You yeah. never escape it. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's horrifying. We didn't have social media when we were no. that young. There are no photos of my college experience. It was just very good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And before so. we move on and start the rest of the show, why don't you tell everyone where they can find the book again one more time? Okay. So the book is House on Fire. You can buy it anywhere books are sold. Uh, Amazon, you can get it at Barnes & Noble. You can get it from Target Online. You can buy it direct from my publisher. But, um, yeah. All right. MattJBat.com is my website. It's got links and everything like that. Perfect. All right. We're mm-hmm. going to get started on the rest of the topics today. So, as I mentioned before, in a very different dystopian universe, one that's far more overproduced in Hollywood, <laughs> a stupid one in other words, The Last of Us has provided us with a fantastic story to talk about that today, and that is the gender wage gap. Uh, don't you love talking about this we'll type of stuff? never tire. It never gets old topic. to hear <clears throat> about how we, what we called him earlier. Now he's essentially known as America's stepfather, yes, Pedro Pascal. Not just that, the unproblematic slutty daddy. I never need to hear that phrase again. That's that's for I, sure. Whatever you sordid relationship daddy? people <laughs> have with Pedro Pascal parasocially, I want nothing to do with it. You Stop don't, shoving uh, it down my face. You don't my think face. of him as daddy? No, I no. don't. So, I don't, honestly, I think Pedro Pascal is super overrated. Yeah, ooh. Uh, I'm like, I, I like <laughs> him. Spicy. I think he's fine. Uh, but the the fact of the matter here is that his pedigree is much greater than that of Bella Ramsey. He was making six hundred thousand dollars an episode for each episode of The Last of Us. Bella Ramsey making just a meager seventy thousand dollars an episode, which means that it totaled Minimum out to wage. she made just <laughs> she she made throughout the total of the show almost. A li- just a little bit more than what he made in one episode. So he, he made about 10 times more than she did on the show. You know how- why? Because Misogyny he's a- and ages. Yeah. How old is Bella Ramsey, though? She's, she's 20, 20, exactly. I mean, imagine having that much cash at 20. Yeah. And he's he's how old? Like 40 something? He's in his yeah. he's 40s. Almost 50. He's almost 50. I just, I, how do yeah. you complain about that much cash in your 20s? Yeah, I, know. And the, the I would get I mean, so much I trouble. She's yeah. not personally complaining about it. Yeah. She didn't bring it up. Uh-huh. But um, they they reported on this and Variety, and then everyone just lost their shit because Why? for some reason, you know, people who are mentally children think yeah. that if you're <laughs> on a show that like the rest of the cast members are paid the same it doesn't amount. Make sense. I also want to point out that as much as six hundred thousand dollars is, it's not. Uh, Hugh Laurie was making over a million dollars an episode on House, and those were twenty-two episode seasons. Yeah, House but you was th- better than like, well, yes, it was. Think about yes, it was. House was back in the days when you had network television mm-hmm. that dominated. Yep. Mm-hmm. The Last of Us doesn't even have peak HBO anymore. Uh, it's I mean it's as close to peak HBO, or it's as close to like the peak of what HBO is now. But it but it wasn't like it's not like Sopranos era. No, where where it still dominated water cooler discussion. Yeah, I mean, in House was a amazing, it was perfect procedural show. It, yeah, it really was. I and can, Hugh I can Laurie, tell you. irreplaceable. 
Yes, he's uh, he, he's a uh, you know they're bringing it back, right? House? Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna reboot with it. Hugh Laurie. That's not confirmed though. That was just a. Rumor. Well, they're doing a second season of The Night Manager. I don't yes, know if you saw I, that. I don't know. I, that we, was a great show. Me and you are the only people on planet Earth that saw that show. Seriously? Yeah, I think so. Oh, like, I, I love that show. Like, even me, who's like uh, that one's a little bit even too uh, avant garde for for my tastes. For, oh yeah, like, you don't like art. It's, uh, <laughs> it's look, it's uh, it was that he also had a show called Chance on on who. Lou, which was about a doctor. Okay. Um, but like, he's like a psychiatrist. He shouldn't play ha doctors. Anymore. No, he, he should he not. Did house. So, so Bella Ramsey's making $70,000 an episode. Pedro Pascal is making $600,000 an episode. And what I love about it is, is like the, the low IQ take that people immediately go to. It's one of the most frustrating things about society today. Anytime there's a discrepancy or a disparity in anything, people just immediately go to the easiest possible answer they could go to, which is that apparently like they both walked now, this is what I picture. Uh -huh. Her and Pedro Pascal are standing next to each other. And they walk into the office together. And the and the racist, coke-snorting HBO executives like, pay that guy more because he's a dude. Okay? Pay him more. And you 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 don't get anything, even though we're going to use your identity markers to, uh, to display it. Also, is it misogyny if she's not technically by her own standards considered <gasps> a girl? Yeah. I saw this, Whoa, this tweet from Bella Ramsey on Trans wrinkle. Day of Visibility. Uh, here's what it said. Happy Trans Day of Visibility to this little dude. It's a picture of Bella Ramsey uh, from childhood. I didn't know the word non-binary in this picture, but I knew what it meant no, inherently. The university because I always <laughs> was and always will be. They Lots love of love to all my trans, NB, and gender funky friends. Yeah. The, I mean, the funky friends creepy. Gender like, funky friends. The, You're such a dork. Yes. Uh, no and, one likes you. You are hated. <laughs> and they love the term uh, inherent and they love the term uh, innate because it fe they feel like it like absolves well, them from having to explain what the hell they're talking they're about. They're big words. Yeah. But the, the point here is that they go to the lowest common denominator. And the simple fact of the matter is, is that he's got way more credits to his name. Yeah. way more gravitas and way more of a career and probably a better agent. Well, yeah, I was that's what it comes that's down to. Helpful. All of this crap comes down to the fact that the best Hollywood actors are the ones who can afford the best agents with the most connections and the most business experience. It is inherently, and this is why it was always so funny when Gad Sad was arguing with like Seth Rogen. He's like, you are a product of the most capitalist industry in the entire world. Like you can use all of the identity politics laden BS you want. At the end of the day, the bottom line is what matters when they're getting paid. They are not going to work for less unless it's an art project they feel strongly about. But in this case, that's not what this is. But now She's they never even younger. do that. They don't even make art projects anymore. No. Well, I, I mean, they make oh. they make crappy political. Uh, they make uh, she said. That's Those their idea are. of art now, which is a movie about the Harvey Weinstein story. Oh. Like they make a uh, wannabe Oscar bait. That's the closest mm -hmm. they yeah. get to art these days. Mm -hmm. And the explanation is just far easier to understand. And the explanation is that it costs more to pay an actor with a bigger name. He was connected to the Mandalorian at the time, which was at that time not suffering. Even that's the insane because, like, we all know that it's just a body double, and he records his lines and sends well, them in. It's like the least effort. And, and, well, he, no, and he, he just talks. To, and he just talks like this. He showed and all his, of his face lines, and in that's... like fifteen minutes of the show, right? Okay, but that's all it took. <laughs> but he wasn't supposed to show his face at all because he's a narcissist, and he had to have his face on. And he was camera. like, I don't know. I'm going to be traveling for other jobs for a while, so you're going to have to keep the helmet on. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I'm a big. I, I mean, I don't think it was like the stupid Boba Fett show where he takes his mask off like the whole time. It's like no, no one cares. Like the mask, yeah. the helmet's the cool thing. That's what's cool. It's like the, it'd be like the killer in the screen, ghost face in the screen movies, just yeah. taking the mask yeah. off right away and chasing so, him around with a knife. Yeah, the, the mask is cool. That's mm -hmm. what people like. Yeah. If if women are paid seventy cents yeah. to the man's dollar, is that what's happening here? By the way, what are NBs yes. paid? Yeah, what, yeah what, what is a gender funky well, friend? Okay. What is a gender funky friend what, what's paid envy? compared to? Envy is a thing where you want something that someone else has. Non-binary. No, I... NB. <laughs> e N B Y. What the hell is that? It's like a cutesy way to refer to yourself if you identify as gender neutral. Uh, is this some Tumblr word that I? Never I mean, knew? it's it's We're obviously extended That's adolescence. Old, yeah. They pay them sixty-eight you know? cents on the dollar on the days they identify as a man, and seventy cents on the dollar on the. So days you really can split cent. the middle. Yeah, it's so the middle. She probably should have been making like what ninety an episode. Yes, <laughs> I probably if if, they, if she had been depending Jeez. on the day. I guess it would depend on the day she signed the contract. 
Yeah, I what guess was so. she identifying at on the day she signed the contract? Oh and does it change depending on the day in which your um, your make believe just decides that you don't want to be this? Do second. they know that when they have brain dead takes like this, it just red pills more people? I like the gender pay yeah. gap thing Not was really like what uh, I mean. I was never a feminist, but in when I like started looking into the gender pay gap stuff. That's what made me actively like anti-feminist, like very strongly, because right. it's just the most on its face. It's the stupidest thing you've ever heard. Well, but it's also always the people who are also making an absurd amount of money who are complaining about it. Of course, it'd be yeah. one thing if she was walking into her like office job and was like, "Hey, I do the same job that this dude does, and he's making tw like five times as much." Yeah, that'd be one thing. But like, she's making what most people, what a lot of people make in a year in one episode. So, and they're not doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of for, for, for me. It's it's sort of I, I have a hard time pitying some of the, the people who yell the loudest about their pay gaps. Also, I, I'm going to call it the ageism here. It's like yeah. you didn't even wait him to hit AARP age before you start claiming ageism. Like yeah. you know, like yeah. Uh, so it's it's ageism because she's young. That's just inexperienced. That's what they're gonna do next. Is just gonna be like they're gonna be like uh, they're gonna get an entry level job at a company. And they're gonna be like we'll pay you like this salary. They're like you're not paying me more, and that's ageism. They're like no, you just have no job experience. No, that's ageism because everything is an ism or a phobe now. And let's face it, the show was meh. It was meh. Like it sucked. She's gonna make a ton more next season. For I guarantee sure. she will make. But isn't she the main character next season? No, no spoilers. Yes. Unfortunately. Well, we don't know when they're gonna get rid of Pedro Pascal. Like well, probably put that well, off as long as possible. So right? they're they are, but they're not. Because is it spoilers? The second game is like three years. Uh, it's uh, like people, it's spoiler. It's been spoiled people on this show before. Right. So and I spoiled the second yeah, game. Yeah, let's not. Let's just say there's flashbacks. You know, yeah. that's not really spoilers. Yeah, no, that's not spoilers. So flashbacks. he'll be there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I just, I'm waiting for him to remake Lone Wolf and Cub because that's his next step. Think he so? is, yeah. I mean, he's played the character basically. Yeah. All these shows are Pedro Pascal as dad protecting a child. Lone mm -hmm. Wolf and Cub is where all these things come from. Let's do it. They have an episode of Person of Interest called Wolf and Cub where he protects a kid from yeah. uh, uh, from uh, a gang run out of a comic book was shop. He, yeah. Actually, was ha his slutty daddy. Have you yeah. have you never read or seen the Lone Wolf and I Cub? Not, I know. Oh. I know. What it, I, I know what it highly is, but yeah. highly recommend. Um, but like, because I was interested in the because they talk about it in the yeah. episode, so it becomes part That's of the in world thing. So. Yeah. Um, or no, they no. I'm sorry. They talk about the concept of the Ronin in okay. that, but you know, the samurai without a master, which is uh, Lone Wolf and Cub. Yes. Yeah. So, so that's it gets brought up in there. But I, I didn't even remember. Yeah, that takes place in a comic book shop. It's like a gang <laughs> run out of a comic book shop, which might be the coolest thing I've ever heard. Now somebody. It's also that. the most pathetic thing you've it, ever. No, heard no, too. it's freaking unlikely cool. to ever. I happen. can't imagine what a comic book shop run gang would look. <laughs> well, like. Well, it was uh, it was a bunch of. They no, would not no. be threatened. Go watch, go watch that episode of First of Interest. It's cool. Okay. It's got uh, Malik Yoba in it. Malik Yoba is a great actor and as well as uh the dude who played bell on um season uh throughout the, all of the show elementary there's one right there mary uh whoa uh, it's, it's jammed Dang. it's not it's okay average dad said if we get to 10 crisis parties bert must be a chicken for a week Jeez. sleep in the coop so we can all watch whether Roberto Jr. stays dominant or if Bert can oh. dethrone him. Yeah. <laughs> You're getting thrown out to the cock castle? Yeah, what happened? Now I'm getting thrown out of the house? He's like, what? He's like what's going on? The, you know, the rise, it's, the fall is just as yeah, quick, Yeah, fall is just as quick. Just as quick. <laughs> I'm worried for you, Bert. Yep. They're coming for the worried. crown. <laughs> like, she will make a lot more money in the next season. And for a lot of these to things... To be fair to Bella Ramsey, it wasn't her that complained about yes. it it's all yeah. of her stupid it's fans users. who are mm -hmm. like 12 years old so <laughs> no they're probably all 40 year olds think so i hope not it's probably a bunch of people who are way too old to care about what she's making if you've got an if you've got an anime avatar i'm immediately suspicious most of the time well you're definitely not a real person yeah like that's that's china or russia <laughs> or uh the yeah bad people that are there to destroy america with anime Insurgents avatar arguments and stuff like that so we'll see where this goes. She has a, a, a fair amount of credits to her name too, but he's been uh, an actor that I've seen in just about everything. Like he, he shows up in like all the TV shows you've watched mm -hmm. for one episode or another. So he's got the It's the like pedigree. conspiracy. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. It's a, it's Hollywood's like, we're still gonna make <laughs> actors a thing. Thank you. Hollywood doesn't like the fact that they don't get to be the ones who pick who's popular anymore. That's because they're out of money. Uh, 
No. Oh, there it goes. Uh, there it goes. Okay. Like Hollywood doesn't like the fact that they're not allowed to be the ones who pick who's cool anymore because the internet does most of that now. Yeah. So I feel like Pedro Pascal is kind of an industry plant. They're like, this is the guy. I mean, but Bella Ramsey has no organic appeal. I can't believe she does. Uh, to, I mean, to, to the youth, this is amazing. maybe. I mean, to, to the youth that's not like you or the way you were raised, like maybe you. younger people who were raised on their phones. The youth that's not like I you. Not, not you. Uh, it's fun. That, there we go. There we go. Funny. See? So gleeful. <laughs> yeah, no, I make miserable books, but I'm, I'm not actually. I'm a happy yes. person. A, a, yeah, a you're miserable a human being. Kind of a happy-go-lucky guy. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate that. I try. It's, uh, so Life's too short to be like upset all the time. That's, that's the problem. Yeah. Bitter people make dystopian literature and art now, yeah. and, and then it doesn't take itself seriously. But they're not for some even reason. cool bitter. They're bitter because they were thrown into lockers as kids. They're bitter and because they made seventy so thousand dollars an episode. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Like, did you see that thing the other day where they were showing like the the average salary of the Hollywood writer? They're making like three hundred k a year. Uh, like in Hollywood, like insane. to make that garbage. That's are you actually insane. Me? That is kind of. I would love to please. Pay like, me 300 k And then every New York script. Times journalist <laughs> does an uh, article with like five different credits to the article. Like, yeah. how did it take this a team to yeah. make this article? Well, they have to check that they're making up the right facts. Somebody yeah, in so. the chat yes. is saying that I'm an industry plant. If so, they they are not good at planting anymore. Which That's industry what, would you be? Yeah, planted what industry from? am I being planted from? And and just no. Wait no. a minute. Copy money? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, straight from the IRS. Yes. Are you calling us out? Right it's now? basically, I mean, it, is it is the stuff that keeps getting printed by the Fed any yeah. less, any more real? No, really? no, it's not. Yeah. And the Fed. <laughs> Good and question. The Fed, uh, and the Fed um, abolished the part, Department of Ed uh, and uh, abolished the IRS. Does yeah. it? Does yeah. it? Keep going. Um, <laughs> have to rhyme. NSI. <laughs> all right. Okay. Uh, we, we can keep going. All, but, hell yeah. All, any? Do do you? Does your agency have three letters? Abolish. Based. Based. Yeah. All right. All I do work things? for Free the People, uh, Matt Kibbe. I am very based. Hell yeah, man. So check out the stuff at Free the People. That don't, was just a plug. I snuck that in. That's okay. <laughs> don't hurt people. Don't steal their stuff. Uh, it's take. Don't take their stuff. Yeah. Seems good to me. Yeah. Yep. So we'll see where it goes. Uh, she will make a lot more money this year and next year. And I really do believe that she will end up being probably a spokesperson in Hollywood for her ide forever. ideology. For her ideology. We'll have to deal with her she will be, forever. Well, what, no, what I'm never. saying is she will be what Elliot Pay, Ellen Page would have been, Elliot Page would have been if she had done <sighs> so earlier. If she had done so earlier. I, f I fucked that all up. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I Whoa. I tried my best to follow the lines on that one. I did yeah, not. You can't. It's yes. tough. The um, math is hard. The, what, like the Inception, though. What Elliot Page is now is what she sucks, will be. sucks because I still think that... Um, Elliot Page, whatever. Um, <laughs> that person is more talented than Val Ramsey. Bust a cap says PCC has three letters. PCC. Oh no. Pop, I guess a lot of things have. Us? Oh yeah, shoot. That's well, not Bert, cool. I don't know. Yeah, Bert. 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 <laughs> Sorry, high voltage BBB. seven five. I don't know. I was maybe uh, a little just, bit broad when I said three letter buff. agency. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, high voltage. Actually, free the people the is also three letters. This is really could get bad. Oh, oh shoot! Yeah. yeah. Shoot. yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, Whoops. are you a government aid agency with three letters? That's will be. Specific. There we go. There yeah. We go. All right, Mary. We got oh, some gosh. super chats there. Andrew Jacobs said, "Bert, Bert, Bert." <laughs> Hi, Mary, Brett, and guest. Shout out to Andrew Jacobs. He's a fantastic guy. We're just I, totally I irrelevant here. What are we? <laughs> chopped liver. We are definitely chopped liver. Marco I'm only just said, guest. Have a happy Easter. <laughs> yeah, you happy have Easter. a happy Easter as well. R Ryle Kittenhouse said Brett is looking handsome and politically neutral. <laughs> yes, yes, I am a politically neutral dresser, ladies and gentlemen. That's mm -hmm. my claim to fame. You can't go wrong with a black t-shirt. You can't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Biddy Beastly said the Discord is cringe because the audience is cringe because your parent channel is cringe. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. <laughs> PCC for the win. <laughs> yes. Wow. <laughs> uh, Tell us how you really feel. Wow. I will. Uh, I mean, I was I was not on board until the very end there. Say with the less. PCC for the win part. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm on board. <laughs> Uh, High Vulture 75 said, is it wear black day or is this a coincidence? So, oh, God. shoot. Somebody else in the chat said, it looks like marrying a bunch of Bretts because we're all wearing black. <laughs> yeah, uh, I kept seeing people give Matt a hat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't wear hats. The I'm, Bretts are multiplying. Yes. Yeah. Or we'll just have to take our hats off, I guess. Yeah. I don't do hats. Derek Menson said, Ments here. Someone is going to have to help Bert in Resident Evil. He's okay, but those big stationary objects are hard for him to aim at. Look, man. <laughs> Bert. 
I can't multitask. So when I'm on the Discord and you guys are talking to me and I'm trying to play at the same yeah. time, I just I I suck. No, that's I suck. Unfair. Yeah, you can't be tr you can't be asked to multitask. Yeah, it's like a, it's an art form to be able to stream in game, right? It really like, is to, it, to be good at it. Yeah. And it looks like they made them faster and harder to shoot in the game. <gasps> Do you remember the regenerators? I don't want to spoil. Oh them. yeah, let's just say. Uh, whoa, that's not. Sp you, I'm sorry. RE4 is off the table with like you can spoil the. But it's this it. is the remake that I'm spoiling. Yeah, but the regenerators were in the original, right? The, it's the something guys about at the him. end. It's something about them, though. Uh, when you had to find the spot, right? You had to find the Do you spot. Have to find the spot. I'll just say, you remember how they were kind of slow? Yeah. No. That's all I'm They saying. run fast? That sucks. Oh, it scared the shit out of me. Oh, <laughs> I was like, ah! <laughs> I, can't, I, 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 I can't wait to buy it. I just it's need so to fantastic. find, like, I need my child to, like, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Disco Jensen said, I liked that scene in Stranger Than Fiction where the female protagonist got everyone in her shop to yell at the tax man. Oh, See, I love that movie. That was a charming little picture. Everyone should, should do that. It's funny, too, because it's not like tax people in television shows and movies are ever shown to be nice or like the, or like people like them. Like, everyone hates the tax man in movies and television. There's a, in the show... Um, and yet they constantly want us to pay more taxes. Yes. In, in the that. show Warehouse 13... The, it's about this government agency that runs basically all of the magical objects that are that are taken by the government are right. brought to a warehouse. Like in the North end of Indiana Jones Raiders yeah, of the Lost Ark, which Bert wouldn't know about, yeah. right? In that show, though, in that show, the <laughs> the agents for the government who work there, who work mm -hmm. at the warehouse, they have a cover in the city, and they they ne they can never understand why everyone in the city hates their guts. And they find out later that it's because their covers that they're all IRS agents, oh. so everybody hates them. Ugh. Yeah, they they are the worst. Well, Jesus loved the tax collectors. Oh, well, but they had to kind of stop being tax collectors to get there, though. Like, well, you, Matthew, you just shouldn't be a corrupt tax collector. I don't think that you can be a tax Caesar, collector and not Caesar corrupt. Theft. Since it's theft, it is theft. Render unto Caesar what is Caesar. Yeah. <laughs> There's a discussion to be had. Is. Rice E oh, no. said, "Sushi gang <laughs> represent." Oh, yep. Yeah. Let's check we, the um, let's sushi. check the ratings right now, guys. If you are uh, if you have not yet voted in the poll, I put a poll up there that says what should they serve for lunch at Donda Academy. Well, right now the leading option is sushi with twenty eight percent. Burgers are running a close second with twenty seven percent. Tacos twenty three percent, and pizza is just failing in fourth place with just twenty two percent. I'm re I just read the headline for that, and and I'm. It's hysterical. Yes. So, Mary, let's hold off on our guys. Go vote in that in that poll, and we are going to move on to the next okay. topic. So, we are going to move on. Tell us about Donda Academy, Mary. Okay, guys. Back in October last year, we talked about Donda because they announced that they were shutting down the school, at least for the time being, in an indefinite hiatus. And it turns out that wasn't true at all. Well, Kanye <laughs> always comes out ahead, apparently. Oh, uh, that wasn't true. They they found that parents and children were still milling in and out of the school at their various locations, which were secretive and hidden the entire time. So did they ever shut down? Unlikely. But now a lawsuit has been launched by a couple of former employees who got fired uh, last month. It's a mother and a daughter. People are asking what Donda Academy is. We should give them a re oh, okay. give them a refresh yeah, yeah. on what Donda. Academy Can you also is. read the headline for this Insider article too? Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, students at Kanye West's Donda Academy were only allowed to eat sushi for lunch, which they had to eat with their hands on the floor. Former staff allege a new lawsuit. What a headline, <laughs> right? There's, I mean, there were three different school, headlines. Uh, the other one says, Kanye West forbids students at secretive Donda Academy from wearing Adidas or Nike, former <laughs> staff allege. Now that's just petty. The other one says, Kanye West doesn't let students at Donda Academy use the second floor because he's afraid of stairs, former what? staff allege. I watched him walk upstairs. That's Cap. He did. He did walk upstairs. That is Cap. I mean, he's walked upstairs, but it was terrifying for him. <laughs> So well, that's why all that happened here. We what? made him walk upstairs. And then he walked back downstairs. Holy crap. 20 minutes later. We should have just done the, he should have just done the podcast on the first floor. None of this would have happened. Yeah. <laughs> so these two plaintiffs are a mother and daughter who were hired at the school in November and January. And uh, obviously this article rehashes the anti-Semitism debate mm -hmm. and the, the White Lives Matter shirts debate. But... If you're getting hired at Donda that late in the game, you're kind of complicit, right? So 
Uh, did you see they're that canceling Vanity, themselves? Vanity Fair did something on Candace Owens recently. I, I saw that on Dallas's uh, Instagram. Something story. meaning she, what? She had the, there was like a there was like a post about her on the Vanity Fair Instagram that didn't look like they hated her. I think it was because she asked an interior decorator um, if like she could hire him to decorate house and then he said like he'd rather be beaten with the stick or something <laughs> sounds like a nice guy um david netto <laughs> i don't know why i know that but anyway be beaten with a stick That's all so <laughs> they they alleged a lot of bizarre things went on at donda specifically that they overlooked bullying which i mean honestly i'm fully in support um <laughs> the children weren't allowed to sit at desks or have chairs they had to sit on the floor on cushions okay. and the teachers had to either stand or sit on stools so there were no chairs anywhere um there weren't enough trash cans they said that the students uh, weren't allowed to finish crossword puzzles or coloring pages they could start but not finish they're like you need to know, know. You need to know like... what it's like to not finish something <laughs> Is it like, oh, we've got one from Perturbed Alpaca that says, uh, who's they though? Stairs. <laughs> we found <laughs> out. That's the answer. They, they I didn't were. know that. It's stairs. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if it was like they weren't allowed to do crosswords at all or mm -hmm. they just weren't allowed to finish the crosswords because it's like good for your building character. Okay. You can't finish the crossword. Um, He's just making their ADHD that, worse. That That's... was another one they mentioned. Um, it, obviously this school is not a traditional one. It's no. focused on music. So like they had this, this choir that they were really into that would like sing at the, the, the Sunday, uh, church thing. The, what, what does he do? It's like the, the Sunday service. services that he yeah. does. They focused heavily on sports because there were a lot of students that got into Donda with sports scholarships. Um, and uh, it's just, it's, it's not, he, he wanted to focus on like real life skills, like agriculture, mm -hmm. but not as much focus on like the core curriculum. I wonder if he's got a class, you know, that, that old inside joke. It's like, you, you go to school and they're like, can somebody teach me how to do my taxes? And they're like, no, but we'll teach you how to do like, it, like a bunch of stuff you don't We're going to teach know. you pre-calc. Yeah. But, it's uh, like parabolas. Like we're going to yeah. teach you a bunch of stuff that doesn't matter, but we won't teach you how to do your taxes. Yeah, does Kanye like, do you have think a, he has a tax class? I right. have no idea. He should have That's a tax like part how of the, to form an LLC. <laughs> part of the appeal of Donda Academy is that no one knows what goes on there. So <laughs> it just sounds like a pyramid scheme. <laughs> I mean, I, it's like for LA elites. Yeah, to, I mean, to go multi level you're signing up scam. for a Kanye school. Like, I, you know what you're getting into, kind of. You know, yeah. and the parents seem very happy there. They're still bringing their kids. Like, you know, he goes to the class. They're like, "Is this art? I don't know. You tell me. Is it art?" And then they just sit there so, and they <laughs> have existential crises for an hour and a half. I don't know. That's better than pre-calc. The plaintiffs yeah. say that Ye provided lunch for staff and students each day, but they allege that throughout the entirety of their employments, the only lunch available to students was sushi. <laughs> so it was widely known that Ye spent ten thousand dollars per week on sushi for the students. I think we might That's work at awesome. Donda Academy. It could be. Yeah. We, there's a lot of sushi here. There's a lot of sushi that gets ordered to this building. Um, it's Kanye sending it here yeah. himself. I, like, uh, Tim Ye. Yeah. Tim Ye. <laughs> I wouldn't like, complain about the, uh, I don't know, that sounds better than the regular school lunch. We're allowed to yeah. sit in chairs, yeah. though. Yes, mm -hmm. we, we do have chairs here, except I saw one go missing earlier uh -oh. downstairs. Uh -oh. there, was a there was a chair missing. Also, I, I want to know for, for Kanye, does he, like, uh, does he teach a class at Donda Academy? Uh, he was recently spotted at Donda Academy, but he's not technically one of the teachers. Like a Pro Tools he's class like and teach him how to do audio posts? Visiting professor. He shows up when he feels like it, basically. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, it also alleged that students are forbidden from wearing Nike and Adidas because <laughs> he has beef with both of those brands. And they have but to wear Balenciaga's all black. But Balenciaga's okay. But Balenciaga's probably okay, Mary. Yeah, he's cool with Balenciaga still for some reason. But they have to wear all black. So we, we could all attend Donda. Yeah. Yeah, so we're yeah, we're great. We're basically Donda students already. We have the uniform. If you're catching on. Dude, I'm <laughs> telling you, right after I finish Prager U, I'm going to Donda. And this Academy. is all unplanned. <laughs> Us eating sushi for lunch today and all wearing black uh is not planned. Coinc we're just coincidence. Coincidence? I think you, not. You decide. Um <laughs> yeah, they're required to wear all black from head to toe. <sighs> Um, Dude, and now Tate is out, and we can go to Hustlers, uh, Hustlers U as here's well. A, here's a weird like, part. They switched their location of the campus multiple times trying to 
remain uh, elusive of the paparazzi, probably. And they ended up discreetly located in a building mark marked Jouet on the front, which is mm -hmm. a skincare company. Mm -hmm. So are they in cahoots with this this skincare line? Could and you, are they going to answer for this? Could you read the name again? Jouet, it's spelled huh. J-O-U-E-R. Uh-huh. And I had heard of the brand before, so I was like, why are they Sounds in the- Sounds fancy. <laughs> why are they in the headquarters building of a skincare line? I heard the same thing. Like, excuse me? <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> Jew? It <is. laughs> well, okay, you just said it. <laughs> well, yeah, we know that, you know, Ye has beef with Well, I just, the when Jewish you read community. the name the first time. Jewy, like Jewy? It just, it's a soft J, though. Yeah, it just. Jewy. Uh, what's a hard you know? J? Well, it's, it's when you throw a little, jug. like, offense on it. You know. <laughs> oh no! I'm I'm telling like in, in, for the classes like well, like now they're talking about. Did you see one of the states? I don't remember which one it is. Is talking about Arizona? I think is thinking about going to four day school weeks. Hell yeah! And kids everywhere are like, fuck yeah! Uh, what happens sucks. on the fifth day? The, you the just week. your parents have to pay for daycare because uh, apparently they won't have school. I don't know if that's actually going to go through, but I just saw I saw people on Twitter talking about this they're saying that they could go to four day workers i bet you kanye awesome. kanye has like a weird schedule where it's like it's whatever everyone feels like doing that day like there's no set schedule yeah it just is and they're like what does that mean it's like i don't know you tell me that you remember in perfect. arrested development when maybe uh she goes to this school where they're graded with like animals yeah. like you got a crocodile on this essay <laughs> it's sort of like that it's that vibe like yeah like he, he he rates everything on a scale of like one to balenciaga like if you're if you end up all the way at balenciaga you get a really good grade based on kanye and everybody else is like wouldn't balenciaga be the one and we want to go up higher to something that's like a little less creepy yeah. but i think i think that's probably how they grade stuff there i just don't think grades are particularly important i don't i i didn't like School. school yeah i don't know it's kind of like or no it's like i thought you were saying like because like were, were you were you like did you do well in school yeah it's like, fine like, i don't like i didn't do homework looks well, don't matter thoughts Beautiful. on their well, on donda's laissez-faire attitude towards bullying uh, well okay it's kind of like hockey ref I, just lets him fight yeah i feel like in-person stuff you if you're going to let the kids figure it out okay yeah. I, I like i said technology don't like it so yeah, this I don't is know. a report of a student that slapped another student. But did the other student was the other student allowed to slap the one the slapper back? Doesn't sound like they did slap back. But were they? But were they allowed to? Like, is it unknown? I mean, it says that the there was no disciplinary system, yeah. so this bully was not properly dealt with, and everyone just had to kind of turn a blind eye to it. But is that the right way? I feel like if the kids are allowed to like. I don't know. I remember you would get into actual just a fight, and if it happens, it happens. And as long as you yeah. know everyone deals with it, you kind of. This is kind of part of Back to the Future, a movie that yeah. you'll never see. Never. Um, that they they had this like uh, look the other way attitude towards bullying, and there are it's kind of the way things were back in the day. Yeah, yeah. and plus, yeah. but the thing is, the, the bullying ended then when you went home, right? And then picked back up again when you went back to school. I actually point out- But they didn't get to out, harass you 24 seven. I actually maintain a, uh, pretty frequently, this is a take of mine, is that yes, it meant like it's actually scarier to be bullied digitally now because you it never ends. No, it, like sure. if somebody sets their sights on you, it used to be one of those things like just turn the phone off, and that works for somebody when you're my age and you're older and you can just ignore. It. Like somebody sends you something mean on Twitter, I can just ignore them. But if these are kids that you go to school with, that's actually asking more. If somebody goes to war, somebody goes to like gets in a fight, like you're in immediate danger. Then then you deal with the aftermath afterwards. Now the kids are in a constant state of fear. And panic right uh and that's that's different than just getting in a fight i shouldn't have said going to war it's like when if you get into a fist fight right yeah. if you get into a fist fight your physical the physical altercation takes place right then and there then you deal with the broken jaw or the broken uh wrist or something if you don't say if you don't punch correctly you go through it right then and then it's over right the digital harassment never stops with kids and usually once you set that once that thing the the fight happens it usually doesn't happen too many times afterwards yeah because you kind now, of even if you try to deal with it but um, then you're the bad guy too if you're like if yeah. you try to deal with something a dispute like with a physical fight it's going to get recorded and posted right. anyway and, then you get, yeah. and it's going to go viral because 
The Twitter for scary. you algorithm prioritizes like fight videos right now. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm very lucky to have grown up in a yeah, time when I didn't I, have to worry about that type God. of stuff and just got into regular fights. Well, the first thing people do when they see physical altercations these days, <laughs> bullying or not, is pull out a phone it. and record it because you're better off doing that than trying to intervene. Which to is stop such it. a nasty thing. It's, yeah, it's, but it's a horrible in instinct. I remember all the fights in high school and we didn't really have the phones back then, but uh -huh. we did still crowd around. Oh, you yeah. have a hundred percent. And yeah. then eventually, it. If yeah, people but sometimes their, might, you might. The if teachers people could get their yeah. phones up yeah. fast enough. They'd film car wrecks going by too, if they could, but right. they just, they drive yeah. by too fast. Well, when you see the car wreck video or any of those things, it's like someone might have died in there. It's kind of uh, ghoulish to be watching it. And Clef, awful. The misfit said uh, in terms of bullying, when it comes to verbal, it should be allowed to it should be allowed because it builds resilience, but physical assault should not be allowed. No. There's too many cases today of kids being beaten and hospitalized by classmates. Teachers you, too. You see that with the, uh, the ACL, like you said, there are all these videos and it's, it's awful and disgusting. Have you seen that meme? No one, that but no one like, stops it. It's like a newspaper headline. It says two men get drunk at a bar and go outside and try to shoot each other with bulletproof vests on. And the cops stop them and it, it cuts to the South Park scene. It's like, I'm sorry. I thought this was America. <laughs> like, I should be allowed to do that. Look, like for, for kids, there was way more fist fights when I was, yeah. when I was a kid. That was just a, I mean, not a regular occurrence, I, but it happened. I mean, the ugly <laughs> truth is that sometimes the physical ends the verbal. Yeah. Right. Well, I also <laughs> wonder, uh, actually, if there were way more when we were kids or not i i feel like they i've seen much worse things like posted online from about kids getting into fights than anything i remember from when i was a kid and yeah. now they're not getting punished for it they're just right. getting uh also because there was i guess like, you did get punished if you got into a fight but everyone got it they had the yeah. commie tactic back then where it didn't matter who started the fight well yeah. yes it does matter who I started the fight I, my brother's school had a no defending yourself if someone attacks you policy. That's the that's you can't hit back policy. It breeds people who then say, uh, "I'll just let somebody rob my house because I value their life more than my possessions." Everyone punished yeah. equally. Mm -hmm. Yep. Anyway, I just um, I think that uh, we the, a lot of it is I don't like the idea of inf of um, advocating bullying. But no. I, it, there's a very clear there's delineation here that kids are suffering because they're not dealing with these types of interactions. I think there's people. a difference between advocating bullying and just acknowledging that it's a part of socialization as you grow up. Yeah. And it's always been a thing. And it's also impossible to fully eradicate. And I think, like, maybe we shouldn't try to eradicate it because uh, it just means you're going to stop the kids who get bullied from defending themselves and the bullies who want to bully are going to continue doing it. So were you and guys it's... bullied? Not particularly. Brett? I uh, didn't, I mean, <clears throat> I don't remember anything of the sort happening. I was kind of, uh, like, most of my friends, like, after, I, like, when I played hockey, and then after hockey, most of my friends went to different schools. Yeah. So I didn't really hang out with most of the kids in my class. Yeah. So it wasn't really something that I experienced. But I know that it happened to people, but it yeah. just it was never the cartoonish version that you saw in movies and television. I didn't see people get pushed into lockers. I didn't see people crowding around other people and calling them names. There yeah. was people that maybe oh like you, you, you didn't I get saw allowed. this thread. Okay, there was like a TikTok that somebody posted that was like uh here's like a you know those like at home videos that uh of like, you know, graduating classes in like two thousand two or three mm. or like from all different years mm -hmm. um, where people would like take a video of like all of their classmates on the, so the last chill. day of high school. And they're like, yeah, they caption it like, wow, graduating in 2002 looks so chill or, or whatever year it is. Uh -huh. And then every quote tweet was someone in Gen Z saying, oh, they look like they would all call me the F slur. What? The what slur? They, they look like they're all homophobic and they don't oh. shower or like uh -oh. some, some they probably, like that. They would have called them the F slur back you, then. It wasn't really I mean, a slur. It, not no, it wasn't. It's not like a hateful thing. No. It's like not what you think it is, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah it was a different time. Very um, different, yeah. Uh, it was chill and they would call you the F slur. Like. We were cool. <laughs> Things were, like life was uh, gen... I, I think Gen X was the last generation of people that were truly... Uh, Probably. Right. Yeah. Now, uh, Probably. Old millennials, I think we had it before. I think the, the cutoff line is like when the iPhone became ubiquitous. Yeah. And like, if you were like growing up with an iPhone, yeah. I think that that's 
Or even with the, like, if you can remember pre-internet. Kids good. in my yeah. class would just cheat by texting their friends the answers, and the, t and the phones just didn't have a lot, like, there just weren't a lot of people texting. Like Teachers had no clue what they were doing. Dude, yeah. And I'm so over here, funny. my poor ass couldn't afford one yet, because I was 15 or 16, and uh, oh. just had to learn the answers myself, and that sucks. Or just accept. Donda Academy wouldn't yeah, allow that. Donda Academy probably takes the phones. <laughs> That's what I did. That's, That's what I was thinking. That's there are probably like pretty strict <laughs> yeah. phone policies with Donda students because you're not allowed to post anything about yeah. being there. People who go there or parents of students there are not allowed to like publicly talk about it. Don't talk about Donda. You, yeah, it's like literally Donda's fight club. That's even better. He gets Brad Pitt in there. Yeah. And Edward who knows? Martin, they, they we won't know lecture. who the lecturers are. Yeah, they, they it's won't part of them. the appeal. Like yeah. you feel like you're part of something exclusive there. The other thing that's funny about it is Dane and me were talking about this fairly recently. It's like, look, we're just from a generation where roasting your friends was part of the culture. Where like, and maybe this is unique to guys. I don't know. Yeah. If, uh, you know, the I always point to the meme where it's like, uh, girls like, oh my god, do I look fat? No, my gosh, you look beautiful. Guys like, do I look fat? So I'm like, yeah, dude, I know five fat people and you're four. Of them. <laughs> that's how guys talk to yeah. each other. When me and mm -hmm. Dane talk to each other, it's it's politeness couched between insults and in depravity. Dude, he literally just insulted me downstairs because I didn't want to play poker because I was gonna be on the show. Yeah, there, there you go. Yeah. That's, that's just how guys talk. Yeah. And I, I, you know, maybe we just shouldn't. Uh, we should go back to segre like uh, sex segregated classrooms, and girls can learn their way, and guys can learn their way separately. We should all be like the masters. <laughs> what if instead of all of them wearing black, the girls wear pink and the boys wear blue? Oh, that is very it's gender, gender segregated. Very gender classes. segregated. They would be more angry about that. It is anything. true, however, when you watch those old videos, they do look older. They they look like they've lived more of a life by the time they were eighteen. Was, uh, they're yeah. less like yeah. I don't yeah. know, like messed up by whatever is in the water or whatever is in the milk or they're I think they look the old. hormones, the microplastics. Yeah, well, I think now it's like now the new generation, like they're not drinking soda, they're they're eating healthier or they're trying to eat healthier, I think. And Are maybe they? they're the, like they know what keto is. If I if you told like we had the Atkins diet when I was in high yeah. school, and I just made fun of you if you talked about it. Like that's a thing, right? So kids these days are probably just more health conscious. I doubt that. I don't know. I don't know. You look at I like when you watch old movies and you're like, what was it? How old was uh, uh, Anatomy of a Murder? Okay, and it has um, George. Uh, he plays Patton in the movie Patton. Mm -hmm. I can't remember George his name. C. Scott. Yes, so he shows up in it. And he he looks like old already, right? And looked up his age, and it's like he's like thirty five like or forty. 30, he's yeah. like thirty two, yeah. and it's like he looks like I would have pegged him at like forty five. Yeah, it's like, mm -hmm. oh, oops. All the guys in Crazy. Ghostbusters were in like their thirties, yeah, and they look like they're fifty. Yeah, like, yeah. Bill Murray never looks. He's is always... it is it hard living? Uh, well, yeah, they did get the to live harder. Everybody smoked. Everybody <laughs> yeah. smoked. And, in the uh, 2000s? Everybody. Well, high well, school in graduates the, in the 2000s I mean, looked older than yeah. high school graduates now. Yeah. I always skipped the first like few weeks of like lacrosse and smoked cigarettes. But they sometime. also looked better. Yeah. I think. They looked cooler. Uh, less, da less emotionally damaged. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like, there's this, like, this genic, uh, kind of like terrified look in the eyes of gen z yeah well it's it's the their days. phones are constantly terrorizing them with, with they they act like demented like literally dementia ridden because you have a thing in your pocket that is constantly harassing you <laughs> mm -hmm. that you can't give yeah. up otherwise you're a pariah it's mm -hmm. terrifying Clef the Misfit said, the cutoff was when BLM, legal gay marriage, and safe spaces sprang up at the same time. I graduated in 2013, and there was no wokeness, and I was bullied plenty for being Jewish all throughout K-12. through Same. Clef, then, do you feel and like... And now you're the burtoning. Yes. Yeah. So, so look at yeah. him now, guys. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I'm trying to think if I was, like, uh, ever... I got lucky. Like, I, I played hockey. I played sports. So I was involved in, like, athletics mm -hmm. and, and then skating. Being, like, I guess you could have, like, I could have been bullied, I guess, for being short. But that never seemed like it ever came up to me. <laughs> like that, I get bullied more for being short now. It's, uh, you think so? Yeah. It's, uh, I've gotten shorter as I've gotten older. But for me, like, short. I just, I don't have... <laughs> <laughs> recollections of that I have one strong recollection of like one of the kids when I started skating making fun of me because I wasn't very good when I first started and that like literally bothered me for like 15 years like to the point where I, I continued I took skating as seriously as I did because this dude said like a, a mean thing to me did you get better 
Yes. No, I, I eventually did it professionally. That's like, like literally go. the, but like nobody talked like that in person, like in yeah. stuff like that just wasn't very common. But um, I don't know. One thing I wanted to bring up from this lawsuit is that the plaintiff's complaints were never addressed. They say the school principal called them, quote, aggressive for raising these concerns. This, it, it says, the plaintiffs believe this type of comment facilitates stereotypes about African-American women being confrontational simply for doing their job and voicing legitimate concerns in order to provide a safe environment and proper education for students. What is a safe environment anyway? I, these days? I think it's funny to get It's a racial discrimination suit. No. Kicked because they say of, they're uh, the only black women who were hired at Donda Academy. How many employees even were there? Probably like 10. The owner <laughs> is black. We don't know. The owner is literally black. Uh, yeah, but so for like Kanye to kick someone out for being aggressive seems a little bit like well, pot kettle. It's the principal who I believe <laughs> yeah. was also black. So I don't know. But is the principal Kanye? No. Oh, no. should be. He yeah. really should be. He really be. ought to be. Like yeah. imagine like all those kids signed up because they thought Kanye He's something was else. Be He's a director. He's Dean. a... Like, I Dean, guarantee yeah, you they got know. to school the first day and they're like, no, Kanye, what the hell? Like, yeah. I don't know. The kids seem happy. And also, like, <laughs> there's evidence to the contrary of everything this lawsuit is saying. Like, I've seen pictures from within Donna Academy where they're How? sitting at tables. They're allowed to use utensils to uh -huh. eat their lunch and it's not sushi. And there are pictures of them in class reading at desks. Like, so all of this seems like misinfo. Well, those pictures could be staged, though. It's true. The, we have no it's way the of PR knowing response. because there's like no that, phones inside of Donda. It's yeah. that new. Um, <laughs> it's that new video that's going around where it says like it, it's the clip from The Wire where he's taking the photo. He, he's like looking out of a car, smiling and taking the photo. It says when a when a campus photographer sees two people of different races sitting together, <laughs> and he gets out of the car to take the photo of them because they have to do that for all the ad campaigns. Uh -huh. As someone who worked at the campus, did did, oh, did you have sure. to take those photos? Uh, we. Um, no, I didn't have to, but yeah, I mean, we did. Uh, yeah. That was yeah. my that, first. That was always, you know, you're looking for a mix of uh, people. That was my first experience of that stuff happening. That was all the way back in 2007, yeah. uh, 2008. I would see ads for St. Cloud State University uh, on the freeway. And I was like, that is a statistically improbable group of people. Yeah. Mm. Like that, like, I'm sorry. It's the rule that, of stock photography. Yes, that's not real. Like, uh, like maybe half that group. But no, not the whole group. Two of those people know each other. <laughs> at, at most. Or like you caught them luckily in the middle of a class presentation. Well, they are staged, by the way. They're no, not. I know. Yeah, Guys, it's all staged. I, I'm real. coming up on a revelation. What? I feel like I know why Kanye ditched IRL. Why? He's afraid of stairs. Oh, yeah. we, we discovered we so that earlier. Many stairs here. Yeah. See, this is our attention span he got, memory. Yeah. He got to the second set and he's just like, I can't take this anymore. But the, he made it all the way up the stairs. But and then, then he made it down 20 minutes later. But the thing is, I think he was like. The, the stairs gave him vertigo and. It was building the, fear of having to go back down them. Yeah. So he's like, I just want to get it over with as quickly as possible. Yeah. So he just. But left. going down the gravity helped him out. It was just right. really quick. But yeah. did he yeah. like fall down stairs at one point and like it was a traumatic event for him or no. he was once pushed downstairs and mm -hmm. it kind of ruined him it was like he was about six when that happened. all right mary let's go to, let's go to super chat that's, shall that's we made, i don't know that's not real. okay <laughs> steve ryman said berman has natural charisma he doesn't seem fake which counts for something in an age of astroturf campaigns and influencers he is our everyman and you will not take him from us we are not trying to thank you for so speaking of the bullying thing like i did get bullied and yeah. like that's really nice yeah like just just to be like be worshipped. Yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> but just <laughs> not the fact that people say okay. nice things now is like, thank you. You yeah. still get I saw you getting bullied on the Twitter though. Damn. Some guy was getting up into you and you That's the you the, slapped him down. Thank you. Yeah. That's the generational thing though. So now I either slap him down and then just move on or just ignore like but if I was a kid and that was happening. Oh god. Dude, I didn't have the arsenal back then. No. I would have just focused on it the whole time. Yeah. I Olivia Clare said, as VP of Ver Bertopolis, I'm here to inform everyone that the Burtoning will continue until morale improves. Wait, so. <laughs> thank you, thank the, you. That's the vice president of A vice president. Of, yeah. of Bertopolis. We have, we have vice president. We have attorney general uh, Chris, also Bert. Okay. Um, we have uh, federal Berto of information, FBI. That's another thing. Are you, do you feel like you're getting too. Is this sort of getting too big? I'm a benevolent leader. Are you sure? Matt? Benevolent I'm Bert. positive. I don't want to see you get corrupt. But... Look, man, I have mod powers in the Discord, uh -huh. and I refrain from using them. <laughs> oh, that is... 
You know what? You are just a regular old George Washington. I'm just You're a, a Cincinnati of the internet. I'm a regular old S poster. That's yeah. all I He's am. He's like, I could post gifts uh, in the post, but I actually just link to them instead so that I can be a man of the people. Exactly. Exactly. I, 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 I jump into link. lounge sometimes. Yeah. Is there, yeah. wow. it's Bertopolis and Bertopia? It's a Bertocracy, Mary. You a wouldn't Bertocracy. understand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, it doesn't sound like a bertocracy. If you're, if you're a, a benevolent lead, if you're a, a, a cult leader, it's not really a bertocracy. Well, he never said he was a cult leader. I it's didn't Bertistan. choose this. I didn't choose this. It chose me. No. Ah. Fair Thousand enough. Foot Deep End said, "Welcome to the show, Matt. Question for everyone: Which is worse, Lizzo on Star Wars or Stacey Abrams on Star Ooh. Trek?" Stacey Abrams, one hundred percent. The the but, propaganda is far more oh. thick with that. They also had Hillary Clinton on Madam Secretary in the fifth season. That was when the show also officially despicable. jumped the shark. No. Uh, uh, but they had like because they had like a, a couple of cameos where Morgan Freeman played like a government official, which is really good because fine. he's like a, a big name actor. So to get him on a couple of episodes, he's like he was supposed to be like a Clarence Thomas Thomas esque type character mm -hmm. in that. And then when I saw Hillary Clinton, I'm like, I just turned it off. I'm not oh, watching this anymore. Well, it was like, I don't know if you've watched the uh, the show, The D Dairy Girls. Mm -mm. It's on the Netflix. Very oh, yeah. funny. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend. Did you watch the finale? Mm -mm. Uh, okay. I Whatever. I I, I, they, they have a, there's a cameo at the end that it totally ruins oh. it. And just, it's like, and it's a totally unnecessary scene. Who is it? It's, it's Chelsea Clinton. Duh. And really? that's the final scene of this very, uh. very funny, very enjoyable show. And it left the worst taste in, 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 in my awful. mouth. Oh, They're like, how can like, we ruin it? Yeah. And it, 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 there is no reason for it. <laughs> so that sucked. Let's do a couple more and then we'll move on. That's okay. worse than Lizzo. Thousand Foot Deep End said PCC needs the Burt Man on the show more often. <laughs> Hell yeah. Dude, they've been badgering me the whole time about this, and I, I'm like, guys, I don't run these shows. Yeah. <laughs> well, you run Bertopolis, though. I run Bertopolis. So. I run Discord. It sounds like you're taking over. I am taking over. I yeah. can't wait to be invited on BRL. BRL, <laughs> right? BRL. Yeah. I told my mom about this, and she it was it was so adorable. She's just like, Are, do these these people not like you? <laughs> it's like, no, mom, they love me. Yeah. And I told my dad, he's like, that's my boy. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like the trying to explain internet based jobs to parents is very difficult. It's very difficult. Yeah. 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 My mom has still has no idea what I do. <laughs> <laughs> like I edit videos that go on the internet. Like, okay, that's nice. You got a book out. <laughs> that's yeah. nice, sweet. I have a book. You have a book now. She wrote a really nice review for it. Awesome. Great. Nice. Cool. I don't think she read it though. <laughs> No. My, my mom says I'm handsome. Yeah, it's just she, just she just writes really nice things. It's like, mom, that's a really depressing book. <laughs> but it was so nice. Is that how you could tell she hasn't read it? <laughs> Let's do one more, Mary. Porco Rosso Forever said the future is going to be less dystopian and more Muslim, at least in Europe. <laughs> hey, Bert, sup, bro? What's up, man? How's it going? Okay, then. <laughs> Fantastic. Let's move on, shall take. we? That sounds we're dystopian gonna, still. Gonna, though, we're going to move on, ladies oh, and gentlemen. Geez. Demi Lovato Shh. is in the news. Because Lighter subjects. Demi Lovato, well, I mean, this isn't really all that light of a subject no. either. <laughs> Demi Lovato was not included in a Disney presentation uh, celebrating the 40th anniversary. Uh, and the idea uh -huh. here is that they don't think that they involved her. Her fans don't think that she was involved because she has been calling out uh, a certain incident that happened between her and somebody that worked at Disney a long time ago. Obviously, as we know, there's nothing worse for any child than to be involved in any type of Hollywood business at all. It's absolutely the worst place you could send your kids growing up. Yeah, I was trying yeah. to think if there are success, like child actors who like are okay. Uh, are there I mean, any? Um, there are. Hilary Duff turned out fairly normal. Okay. Selena um, Gomez is fairly normal. Alexa Panavega wasn't a Disney kid, but she turned out fairly normal. Her and her husband, who is also uh, in Big Time Rush, are now like... They oh, yeah. They live in Hawaii, and they're pro-life, and they, and they talk about... Wow. Uh, I was just reading an article from her today talking about how... Like, of course, she has to be introduced, like, interviewed by, like, Christian Monthly or something like that because mm. no regular outlet will give these people the time of day because the regular outlets are corrupt and won't listen to people that don't agree with them. Uh, but but uh, if you ended up being on Disney's A team of kid stars, yeah. usually that you led to ruin. Time. I yeah. mean, we were just talking about Amanda Bynes briefly. Yeah. But wasn't she on Nick, though? 
Uh, yeah, yeah. But, but, I, but I, I guess I mean, that also Nick, wasn't good. Dan Nick Schneider. also was, yeah, <laughs> run was by d- a guy like Dan Schneider. Yeah. Uh, Disney had, I'm sure, their own Dan Schneiders. Oh, for sure. Or multiple Dan Schneiders who we will never know about. Um, no, they, or maybe one day we will. They're locked in the vault along so, with all the DVDs. And, no, in Walt, and Disney's, corpse, in Walt Disney's Walt head. Disney's head, yeah. Yeah, where, where they're going to keep him, you know, on ice until they can conquer the death barrier. It just, <laughs> he seems like this post that they made is Streisand affecting... Demi Lovato, because yeah. everyone is going to notice that she's not in it, and they're mentioning everybody else. Um, but it's reportedly because they're unhappy that Demi Lovato talked about getting R-worded um, by a fellow cast member <laughs> while she was in her Disney days. I was thinking of the other Which R-worded. Which R-word are we going with here? Um, the R-A-word. <laughs> Oh, yes. okay. I was thinking of the other one. I'm yeah. like, that's a funny statement. Uh, the, oh, never okay. mind. Oh, yeah. not, not funny at all. Not funny, no. not funny at all. <laughs> we have too many words. Yes. It's awful yeah. what they do to the, I mean. So it, it just says, uh, Demi Lovato opened up about, oh, thank whoa, you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is that seven? I forget. We've Nine. Got, Good God. Gordon Shumway said, Bert and Hannah Claire on PCC together must happen. Make it so. Hannah Claire must be birdified. <laughs> what? Okay, I need to ask. Bert-ified. What does it entail to be birdified? You just change your name. <laughs> okay. So, so, <laughs> Bert Asvik. Okay. What about me? Brett Bertsevik. Uh, what's your last name? Morgan. Mary Bertkin. Bergen. How do yeah. I become it's a? It's like Bert? Candace Bergen, but Bert Bergen. Battaglia. Yeah. Oh, Matt, Matt Bertaglia. Ooh. Yeah, that's that, cool. that rolls off the tongue. I, can I like go that. Bert easy. Yeah, Matt Bert. We have Tim Bert the pool. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Is he? He's on the Bert. He's on the Bert train. I don't know if he's on the Bert train. He's aware so it of it. Be Hannah Claire Bertolo. There we go. See, you're there doing you it. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm getting birdified. I'm proud of you. <laughs> I'm gonna change, put Bert on the cover, and then I think that'll sell more, right? <laughs> no, it's just gonna give me attention, dude. Take the attention. It's your book. <laughs> Look for for Demi. Also, what is it? The 40th anniversary of what Disney? Of Disney Channel. Okay, Disney Channel. Channel. Ooh, I was like, Disney's years? way older wow. than 40. Like, right? Uh, yeah. So 40th anniversary of the Disney Channel. I'm kind of surprised by that. The, yeah, I didn't think it's been that long. For something like this. I just wonder if, if Streisand effect is the only thing they could come from because including her probably would have sparked the same debate. Somebody would have said like, oh, you're going to include her even after everything she's been saying is going on lately. Like, Demi I, Lovato is not my favorite person no, by no. a long shot. Yeah, like but... she's a very annoying person, but I guess like going through traumatic events is often going to make you unpleasant to be around yeah, yeah and and not being able to talk about it not being able to seek gonna make any you justice irrational. for it it's going to yeah. make you try to seek justice against a frozen yogurt shop for having sugar-free right. yeah. flavors but how dare they because you're it, it just makes you demented to like go through things like that yeah so, and i mean I, I i do you i do have sympathy for all the like the what what disney and their you know all their these producers who've treated all these kids monstrously i Mm-hmm. Somebody you called know. her Demi Bertlato. <laughs> Heck yeah. <In> the chat. <laughs> this is never going to get old for me, guys. No. I hope Demi you know that. Ride it. Ride it while you can. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, her, Miley Cyrus seems to be doing fine. Obviously, she has a parent. Miley uh, Cyrus uh, fine? Uh, she's, releasing mu- she's releasing music. I wouldn't she's, call her the most well-adjusted But she's acting. Lady. She's releasing material. I don't know that that, that means her. Party in the USA is a banger. I'm just oh, yeah. Oh, it is an absolute work, banger. Man. I wouldn't say oh, continuing dude. to work is a metric of yeah. being like okay or sane because yeah. Britney yeah. Spears was working by force right. up um, until quite recently. You know what yeah. is a better version of Party in the USA is Party in the CIA? by Weird Al Yankovic. Uh, I don't know. Party Everyone, in the USA was a party in the CIA. huge if, As a libertarian, you should listen to Party in the CIA. I, probably. Criticizing the military industrial complex in our uh, in, I, uh, illegal invasions I, of other countries. I do but you're hate that parties. stuff. Yes, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I'm a great time. I just have very fond memories of getting drunk at, uh, at the <laughs> Scarlet Pub in New Brunswick. In Listening to Party in the USA. Party in the USA. <laughs> so, yeah. Thanks, yeah. Disney. What would we have done without you? Technically, oh, yeah. Britney is a former Disney kid too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, J- and Timberlake. Timberlake. Yeah. They were both Ryan Mickey Gosling. Mouse Club. Ryan, Ryan Gosling, Gosling was huh? also on that? Uh, he, uh, right. Ryan Gosling was part of the Mickey Mouse Club. Do Interesting. you think, do you think they abuse Ryan Gosling? Uh, I don't know. He seems okay. He seems pretty good. 
That's... Timberlake is okay. Yeah, he he's like he's a, he ended up getting himself. married, and then he made a whole concept album about like doing LSD in the woods with his wife hey, or something. Why not? I don't know. That's nice. It's <laughs> romantic. <laughs> like uh, he looking depends on your interpretation. I lo looking forward to his divorce album. <laughs> I'm, that's, I'm I, that's my favorite genre I'm, of music. If I was wrong about Ryan Gosling, I'm waiting to see if the chat no. will correct me on that. I could. I hadn't wrong. heard of Gosling yeah. being on um, mm -hmm. the Mickey Mouse Club, but no. yeah. yeah. So this, this headline says 90s. Demi oh. Lovato opened up about losing her virginity after being allegedly R-worded as a teenager by someone who was also on a on Disney, and she said she still feels deep sadness about it. Well, who wouldn't, right? Yeah, um, I mean, she says that this co-star uh, never got in trouble for it and never got taken out of the movie they were in, which implicates a lot of people because you're not naming who it is. And then we have to have that discussion. And then we have to have that whole that's... other separate discussion because yeah. it's like, it brings me too into it. Yep. And like, are you doing something unethical by not specifying so that they keep on victimizing other people, mm -hmm. supposedly? Um, and like, we also talked about her mentioning um, her ex-boyfriend, Wilmer Valderrama, Valderrama. Yep. who was, oh, we've got a super chat from High Voltage 75 said let's get that 10th party the burt man demands it yes let's go does demand he demand it? it i do demand yeah it. i think okay. it's demanded I do. i've been like in how, in the discord I saw that. You're in shilling we're, for we're matt's book shilling party. for the yeah. crisis parties how, how do you how do how does a crisis party happen i didn't i haven't figured out uh, math on that yet uh, uh, it's every hundred dollars okay it, yeah. uh, yeah. it triggers it automatically yeah. somebody so, mentioned mandy moore in the chat she's pretty normal uh wasn't she also married to Lindsay ryan Lohan. adams no, Mandy Moore, Mandy or am Moore I thinking was married of... to. Um, oh, I already. Forgot. She, she. I just remember her from the movie Walk to Remember. Yeah, you know, no, she was married to Ryan. Adams. Oh, she, she now she she was married to the dude she was on the show Scorpion. Uh, okay. Scorpion. Yeah, with, but she and they've was... already divorced and she's got married again. But in America, Wait. being married a bunch of times doesn't necessarily mean you were uh, uh, anything happened to you as a child. It just means you have horrible taste in the opposite sex. That's a universal concept that everyone. Yeah, no, she was yeah. married to Ryan Adams. Was she? Okay. <clears throat> like how long? Which, ago? Long time ago? No, like, I, well, I, not a long time ago in my memory, yeah. but it was probably you know eight years ago at this point. But what? It, I don't know. So some of them. I like his music way. a lot, but he I, he apparently isn't a particularly a good nice person. Guy, but also his music's great, so I don't know yeah. how do you deal with that. We've got a big super chat from True D Jones. Thank you. No Thank message you. though. And that's a weird color that I don't see ever. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Andrew uh, Leespin said FBI <laughs> head here. Bert is the future, and anyone against that <laughs> against this will be indicted for something we can't say. Then I'm going to wow. need to ask you, Andrew, <laughs> how how is our see here at uh, Timcast? We have a, a like basically a live-in FBI agent who just has his own. He sits in the van outside and uh -huh. monitors our conversation. His name's Tad Bromwell. I named him a long time ago, <laughs> uh, and I would like to know if Tad Bromwell has gotten a promotion and moved on to bigger things at the FBI. Or if he's still stuck out in that van listening to conversations of us here. It's got to be. Like, I always imagine that FBI agents who get long details like that uh -huh. listening to events, it turns into reality TV shows for them, and they just start rooting for the people that they're well, They're watching characters. To. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. so he's like, yeah. I love that Burtman guy. Yeah. yeah. I guess being an FBI agent is like watching Real Housewives constantly. Yeah. Like, you just, you yeah. have characters. <laughs> At that some point, you just start leaning into so it. so appealing for me. What, Real Housewives? Uh, no, being, being in the FBI, FBI yeah. agent. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean, part of it would have to be like that. You're just watching people. You're a voyeur. Well, <laughs> if you have to like, let's all is. go apply for the NSA. <laughs> yeah. If you have to like uh, post things that entice people to criminal activity, yeah. then you get to be an active player. Oh, that's true. So. Yeah. Porco Rosso that's forever says too. Tad Bromwell got demoted. He follows Luke now. Ah, so maybe he, when Luke left, he had to go uh, surreptitiously follow behind him. Uh, you know, not too close, at least one car length away. Uh -huh. You don't want to follow Guys, too close, not too far. let's storm the PCC studio tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> it, it, we must do it for democracy for democ democracy for bertocracy democracy thank you for she's getting it guys she's in she's in we got her there are so many in jokes happening and i'm just trying to keep up <laughs> i i'm i'm with you on most of it here uh, but uh, th those are my favorite memes now it's yeah. all the memes of like the fbi uh like insiders who are like it's a guy sitting in an fbi jacket yes. for no reason typing at a computer yeah. It says like we must march. Yeah, they're they're trying right now in the chat to uh, if we get ten crisis parties, then I have to take my wife out to a 
quote unquote five star restaurant while I wear yes. a chicken hat. Okay. Where's the closest five star restaurant? I, I don't know. Like yeah. I know we have Bricks have no 27, idea. which apparently I'm an uncultured swine and, and apparently it's Brie 27, but Ooh. it's Bricks to me. What? How, how's, yeah, it right? how's it spelled? B-R-I-X. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's Brie. Hashtag uncultured swine. No, that's... Oh, how do you come pronounce on. it? No. Why I, is the X According silent? to half Armenian Charles. Hey, what do you say? He said it's Brie, you uncultured swine. Oh, well he, you know... <laughs> Wait, why He's is not he part of the Burton silent? Egg. I'm so confused. I, that's what I French-ish. said. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not French. I'm American. Okay? Yeah. That's not what we started saying It's like when they add an extra E to, to words. Yeah, or like, like Laloy. What's up with the double L? I'm Babert. Yeah, yeah or LaCrox. Babert. LaCrox. Bert. Bert. All right. I <laughs> this show is ridiculous. This, yeah. yeah. Like, there is no segment here. We're like, uh, that, isn't this hilarious? Like, in the middle of this extremely Oops. serious discussion. Uh, <laughs> well, the basic story is the, the, Disney Channel, oh, wait, the Disney Channel account is, like, actively hiding replies to their tweet yeah. that are mentioning Demi Lovato yeah, and anything re- regarding the allegations. Which, if anyone uses Twitter, they know hiding replies just draws everyone to go check Woo! what they are. Thank you. All right. Ten wow. parties. Ten. That is 10 right there? Yes. Wow. Can we make it to 11? I, mm, I don't know. I don't know. What do you have to do at 11, Bert? I, I don't know. Let them decide, I, I guess. Someone yeah. commented 50 shades of Bert. <laughs> oh, oh. We're not doing no. that. We're not doing no. that. Putting the kibosh Bert, on that Bert's one. a happily married man, and we don't want to implicate his wife in anything. No, 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 no. Yeah. We're good. <laughs> no, I don't you. think she wants to put... Jeez. She doesn't want to shell out the money for a basement room to do no. the Fifty Shades no. stuff. No, but it's funny. The five-star thing, I'm like, well, she's more of a Wendy's Chicken Tenders kind of lady. Yeah. You know? Yeah. She's but not into the fancy stuff. It, variety is the spice of life. Variety yeah. is the spice of life, yeah. I'll, I'll give you I'll give you some restaurant recommendations. You can take her into DC. Wait, so if the nice if city, the X is silent, does that mean Latinx right. is actually Latin? I don't know. Huh? Latinx is that oh. Latin then? If no, the it's Latino or Latina. You mean Latin? Yeah, or Latinx. Latin. 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 Uh, I'm going by somebody in the chat was saying. This. Oh, yeah. uh, Latini. <laughs> Latinx. Latrine. I know. Bert. Bert. Self. Bert. They. Them. Because my name, Bert Mann, yeah. is transphobic, so it's Bert They Them. Okay. Uh, All right, Bert. Bert you're they, them. a prolific Twitter user I am, yes. with a blue Thank check. You. Um, you have the check? You paid for it? I am. I paid Dude. for it. And now I love that Elon did it. It says, this may be a uh, legacy varied account or a paid for I'm just like, cool. Now they never know. Wow. Yeah. Thank you, dude. Yeah, they don't know if you... Uh, You're grandfathered they don't, in. I'm grandfathered in. They yeah. don't know. Yep. You could be a legacy. Do you ever hide <laughs> replies on your tweets? Uh, What does that mean? You can choose to to hide a reply on your tweet so it doesn't immediately show up, but people could click the hidden replies button. Oh, to look at what it everyone is. clicks the hidden reply. Yeah, I always every time. Click the yeah, I hit because you know the best replies are hidden. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'll, I'll like I'll sometimes I'll mute one. Like if people start arguing, I'll just mute it because I'm like, gosh, shut that up. makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Well, you don't want the your hidden phone replies thing though. Yeah, exactly. It's like a surefire way to make sure everyone looks at the reply. Yeah. You're uh, pointing at we it. We got yeah. a big one there from Francisco Sanchez Jr. Oh, we did? Yes. Uh, take it to 11. Said, let's take it to 11. Are we going to get 11 yes, parties this now? Will, oh, my God. This Great. will go to 11. Yes. Jeez. Thank you, Francisco Sanchez. You just did. I don't know what I did, guys. Uh, save, save, <laughs> you were just yourself. Save some money and buy a book, please. Save some money. Yeah. Buy House on Fire by Matt Bataglia. Yeah. Uh, Bert Bertaglia. Matt Bertaglia. Matt Bertaglia. Thank you. I, yes. I am of the Bert. Thank you very much. I appreciate welcome. your loyalty. I don't, uh, half, half Armenian Charles really tried earlier, but he did oh, not. Yeah. Sorry, did Charles. Not I, I told best. you not to kick the hornet's nest, man. Um, like I, I always click the, the hidden replies. It's Every like time. it's a yeah. rule. You have to now. Yeah. Now that I love Twitter as much as I love, uh, I have found that I get sucked into a bunch of discussions where I, I basically become the Michael Jackson eating popcorn meme where I'm just reading a bunch of awful people saying awful things to each other. To- Taking apart the Matryoshka doll of yeah. replies and quote tweets constantly. And I'm like, ooh, look at the thread goes off this way in this reply section. I go so, all the way to the bottom and like, then I, I unravel. It's like the, the 10th circle of hell. The Eric, yeah. like the, the stuff that gets sent to Eric D. July mm. is insane. And yeah. I have so much fun reading all of the mental illness that gets thrown at him. And I always feel worse for it when I'm done. Like it's, yeah. it's a problem. Like yeah. I, I do have to limit it. Can't the, relate. It's uh, you. You don't feel worse when when you're done reading no. the. the like, no? I do. I I feel oh. worse when I'm done. So that's just the way it is. 
All right. Now that we had a particularly not all that uh, productive discussion there about it's okay. the, the very serious topic of what is going on with Demi Lovato, let us read some super chats there, Mary. Okay. Uh, Shimmy Shelley said, Matt, your ink style is amazing. Thank Beautiful you. work. Thank you. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you so much. Buy it's, the product. It's really good. Buy the, Buy book, the thing. Amazing. Yep. Uh, my child needs a college fund. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Porco Rosso Forever said, the future is going to be... Oh, no, that's the... I read that before. Yep. Uh, Porco Rosso Forever just sent that like three times. I don't know why. Is it the future is Bert? Uh, I mean, the future is Bert. It's like 20 of them. <laughs> Bad Adam 12 said, in the PCC merch store, you need buttons that say, I like Bert or I heart Bert. Make it so. <laughs> oh, so speaking of that. So this is our problem now? No, no. <laughs> Jess Jessica made a limited edition Bert sticker. Uh, we're capitalizing this on this This isn't going to be in the, the BRL merch store. This has to be the PCC merch store. Baby steps, Mary. Yeah. Okay. So pick up your limited edition Bert sticker. Also, I did see somebody in the in the chat earlier saying, "Where are my Where is my Crisis Actor T-shirt? I've been waiting. They want they want yeah. the Crisis Actor shirt. I don't know if we're allowed to make shirts that say I am a Crisis Actor. I oh, think yeah. those shirts already exist. Actually, I've seen people. I think you get them from George them. Soros. Ah. No, unironically, I've seen <laughs> girls post pictures in shirts that say I'm a Crisis Actor. Uh, we need to or like Crisis <laughs> Actress. We need to make one. It's a thing already, work. sadly. Uh, Porco Rosso Forever said, Matt, I'm an artist too. Me and my friend <laughs> made... Is that 12? That's 11. 11? Okay. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> oh. Butler. Particularly. I also liked Birdie Steps, Mary. Birdie, birdie Steps. steps. <laughs> Okay. okay. Uh, he said, Matt, I'm an artist too. Me and my friend made an anti Barney comic <laughs> in fourth grade called The Purple Freak Must Die. We got Jeez. in trouble. Yeah, I mean, it makes I, sense. It makes, I look, I also Make it now. did not like Barney yeah. either as a child. I had no strong feelings one way or the other about Barney. Uh, it seems he's like, a government shill. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Literally on PBS. Bar Barney is a stooge of the state. <laughs> That's why I wasn't allowed to watch Barney. Really? Disco Jensen. Yeah, because it's on PBS. Oh, wow. Uh, what about the Wishbone show? Did you watch Wishbone? No, uh, actually, because that was on also PBS on PBS. Everything on PBS banned. Where in the world is so no, uh, no uh, Reading Rainbow either. Mm -mm. Oh, geez. It's no, no, government no, no, program. Yeah, no. It's just, it where is. in the world is Carmen Sandiego? I remember that, yeah. 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 Wow. Oh, good. Disco Jensen said, I'm with Matt. Fatigue only happens when the quality slips in a property. Tropes are a thing because themes and plot structures are timeless. Hell yeah. Yes, yes sir. Like, that's actually a lot of like what I was talking about in the article that I wrote the other day is that there mm -hmm. are just certain tropes that will stand the test of time and do not need to be subverted. Stop subverting them. Mm -hmm. And Clef the Misfit is asking, where are the crisis actor shirts? I'm waiting every day <laughs> to order one. Uh, we don't know. We'll... <laughs> We'll look into that. Yeah. <laughs> Porco Rosso Forever said, if we hit 10 parties, do we have a challenge? 10 parties and Brett reviews Citizen Kane. 10 parties and oh. Mary becomes a juggalette. Wait a minute. So, Brett, you don't care? <laughs> You've never seen Citizen Kane? I don't Kane? give a crap about Citizen Kane. Okay. I don't can either. I, can I make a Can nope. I make a case for it? Yes, you can go ahead and make a case Please, for it. Please, let me. I, I believe it's one of those things. You might not like it, and I don't think you have to like it, but I think that if you are interested in filmmaking, I do think that it's an important watch. I think there's a I lot of... I fell asleep. That, that's fine. I, when I, when I, I, I went to film school. Yeah. I was forced to watch it. And you it, fell asleep during it. I fell asleep. I did too when I watched Rose it in college, bud. but I <laughs> I enjoyed I it. I, I enjoyed it. I watched it. I'm a sucker for the criteria. I got, you're going to hate this. I, I'm a sucker for the criteria on 50% off sales. Of course. And, <laughs> and I definitely bought Citizen Kane. And I show watched it your, like last show year. Show us your A24 tattoo. I know I you got I don't have one. an A24 oh, tattoo. No. I did not care for the Green Knight. I mean, <laughs> although I thought Marcel the show was adorable and nice. Look, <laughs> like, uh, like I said, pocket protectors for all you nerds. Like, I just it. think it's a... It's a to get it, an like, interesting movie. I love. I like Orson Welles. I think he's great. And I, yeah, I am geez. here to simultaneously complain about entertainment while lowering the IQ of every uh, type of entertainment you, that's out there by promoting only the funnest of things. You can none like highbrow and lowbrow. These things can coexist, man. Get the. I don't know. Well, look at you with your life put together and everything. <laughs> I apparently don't have that. <laughs> 
Perko Rosso forever said house on fire too. house on fire in space. Yeah. How you doing, Bert? Electric boogaloo. <laughs> Electric boogaloo. I'm good. How are you? Just... Also, they wouldn't be able to do a house on fire in space because there wouldn't be fire in space because there's no o- oxygen, right? True, true. Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think if I set it in space and I wanted there to be fire, I just... You just have to accept it. Everyone loved Freddy, yeah. uh, Freddy and Freddy uh, in space. J- Jason in space. space X. Jason, Jason X. X. Jason X. Yeah. 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 I mean, my favorite is still the one in Jason takes Manhattan when he just knocks the dude's head <laughs> off and it just falls off the side of the building. The guy, he like, it's this great scene where it's, it's shot from the side and the guy just beat like punches him for like three minutes until he's just literally out of breath. And then he just goes, Wow, he knocks his head off. Have you ever seen my favorite comic book movie, which is the Punisher Warzone movie? Yes. Yeah, Thomas, when they hear, Thomas James. No, 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 not Thomas Ray Jane, Stevenson, uh, Ray Stevenson one, yeah. where he RPGs a guy when he's yeah. jumping through. Between. <laughs> my point is, is you can like that and you can like Citizen Dude, Kane. I love... don't have to, you know. I don't know, man. I just, I don't got time for all this <sighs> highbrow stuff. Uh, I feel like I could appreciate Citizen Kane. I've seen it one time. I, yeah. Same thing. I fell asleep. I yeah. already have you can't horn watch it when glasses. You're I don't need yeah. to be any horn door. <laughs> I, I've, I've already got. <laughs> no, just, just join, <laughs> join me on the, come on. I'm, I'm not doing it. Go I'm full, full it. blown horn rimmed. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Last of my kind said Smokey and the Bandit, a whole movie about moving cores. Yes. I think if they took advantage of the situation and used a trans am to offer Bud Light as an alt. So the movie Smokey and the Bandit, they have to bring cores across state line be- lines okay. because at a back in the day you could only get cores in a couple of states. Like it was used to be a craft beer basically. Oh, and that's he's, funny. And so there's a car called a Trans Am and Bud Light. You, see, you get it. My my grandpa got in trouble. Yeah. For that back in the day. Yeah. I get it. Okay. I'm just uh, it was. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> you just have to go it's got Burt Reynolds in it, who is also a Burt, you know. Hey, hey, there we go. Hey. Her eyes right now were just like, oh my God, this is not going to stop. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, are, did are I just mansplain the... Smokey and the Bandit? I feel like I just. I, I really mean, if you're a man and you explain man, something, is man it mansplaining? The shit out of that. There's this amazing Instagram channel called The Dadvocate, and it's yeah. this girl who woman splains. M- Women to men. <laughs> you ever really notice funny. how mansplaining always is womansplained to you? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird, huh? Yeah. My wife womansplains to me all the time. The, uh, <laughs> it's the, it's like, it's like, like, what, like they're talking about womansplaining. The guy's like, it's when a man explain like, what's what womansplaining? She's like, it's when a man explains something to a woman. So he mansplains what mansplaining is to a woman. Oh my God. That's just Love when you it. hit them with the Bert. Yeah. Yes. Bert? <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. You know um, what? You know what? Hold off. We're gonna we're gonna talk geez. about Carol G. We're gonna talk about what? Carol G. Real quick. We're doing this, this so you have stuff to say about this because I this did, involves Photoshop. Oh, sh- this I didn't involves, even look at the picture. Yes, yeah, you gotta look at the picture. In yeah, fact, I will on. put it up on screen here. So have you Carol, heard of this woman? I no, have not I have no heard idea who her. this is. So Carol G. Uh, has a, a like a magazine cover out at GQ Mexico, and she said that the cover is disrespectful because it doesn't make her look like she actually looks. I'm gonna put the picture up on screen right now there you can see it and she doesn't really look like herself this is the no. photoshopped one and then you go back on the carousel that's what she looks they like made without her look makeup very manly yeah, I, yeah they didn't I, that's evil use of that's really I, they did this weird thing with her cheeks yeah like they were super she accentuated like the chad meme. Che- <laughs> cheekbone I, she yeah it really looks like the chad no, meme she's totally right in complaint in being they also i think they did something weird with her with her um, they're like her you, arm like the the perspective on her like the hand that's holding her hair they like yeah it looks like it was ai it, generated so yeah gonna, like mess up the number of fingers no she has every right to be pissed off and they're totally in the wrong for doing that and that's, the face uh, looks like could you give her yeah. the buckle fat treatment without actually getting it i feel like if she they, looks if really unattractive in the her photo to look hot then she wouldn't have said anything but because they photoshopped but, her badly she's mad about it well but they made her look she, she doesn't look like that that's yeah. not i don't know i wouldn't want people photoshop i don't do you think? Ugh. Do you think that they have and much they of a, a say, right? Too. Like uh, a lot of these people, they go and they get these magazine covers, and you don't really have a say in what the out, like you know, what it's going to come out and look as. So it's like she can't really. Compl- I mean, she can complain and she can be upset about well, it, but it was always going to be photoshopped. It's not like this it was ever a version of history in which they were just going to take the picture that was shot and post it. That's why yeah, I'm but- saying, like, she would have probably not said anything if they had photoshopped her to look good. Exactly. Yeah, but. 
I mean, okay, if you're gonna go in and Photoshop a photo, and then you you make the person your subject look look worse than they actually look, that's, well, yeah. that's you did bad at your job. But the thing that you're being paid for. What she's calling out is um, it's disrespectful well, to me and the women that every day wake up feeling. It, uh, Look, looking to feel comfortable with ourselves despite society's stereotypes, which implies that it's about like, oh, you're like having an unrealistic beauty standard for women by photoshopping. I, so, I hate being kind of woke on this, but I think she's kind of right. Like in that, she looks bad in the photo. She, she looks awful in the GQ cover. It's not a beauty cover. standard. It's it's an ugly standard. Yeah, but she's getting judged by this photo on a GQ magazine, which is a big deal. It goes out to a bunch of people, and maybe this is someone's first time seeing her, and that's not particularly that flattering. So I I didn't really know who she was. Yeah. I have no idea who she. And is. when I saw the picture, I was like, did this come out in March during Women's History Month where they have guys? Yeah. On the cover? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, wow. no, yeah, I thought it's that too. really bad. Yeah. No shade to her. Like whoever did the Photoshop is no. Shade. If you look Should at other pictures fired. of her, she's very pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's yeah. a right. very pretty woman. Yeah. So um, they did her dirty with that. Yeah. I just don't want it to be like a virtue signaling thing about beauty standards when you're only mad because you look ugly in it. If you it, looked hot in it, you wouldn't have said anything. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, but then that means that the Photoshop person actually did their job correctly. Would like, she have still said that she it doesn't look like her if it didn't look like her in a good way? I mean, realistically, eh. the best Photoshop is supposed to be like the best CGI. You're not supposed to know that it's there. Right. You should just be tweaking like levels for like shadows and some saturation and stuff. But like the they shrunk her arm, like her elbow is. Yeah, the arm was the the first one that I noticed. Like the rest of it, her face just looked like. And they they darkened the her face. cheek cheekbone, yes. which. That's another thing. That's a weird trend, though, I've noticed. Um, what's her face that was in that movie, uh, The oh, Menu? There, there's, a, there's a $20 one right there. Uh, it says, for TV, the Supreme TV Leader. TV said, for the Supreme Leader, we are Bert. Bert? <laughs> it's, a, it, it's a cult, and it's growing. Yeah. Anya Taylor-Joy. Like Anya they, Taylor. you, have you noticed her cheekbones? Like, you could cut yeah. someone with them. Yeah. And she got the yeah. buccal fat removal surgery. Right. And they, like, did this on this gal, and... She doesn't actually it's have that in real life. If yeah. was, or, well, now that I'm looking closer to her arms. What is the surgery you're talking to about? Her elbow looks yeah. bizarre. Her, yeah. Your body is absurd in a bad way. And, yeah. You know, like that, somebody should actually photo, <laughs> like make a make thing it, where he sent her this real? message. Your body is absurd. You might cover. want to get that checked out. Yeah. <laughs> On that cover. Like, it's like, your body is absurd. She's like, oh my God, Adam Levine's reaching out to me. <laughs> it says dot, dot, dot on that magazine cover. No, seriously, <laughs> it looks bad. Like, who did that? Like, what, what's the surgery you're talking about? Buckle fat removal, where they remove the fat from your cheeks. Oh. Yeah. Oh. That's, That's what, what Anya Taylor-Joy like, got. Um, oh, she doesn't look... I'm and she used to have, like, a she'll... fuller yeah. face that looks more well, like a woman. Yeah. Did you watch that movie, The Menu, that she was in? Yeah. Okay. I liked it. I did, too, except I just didn't believe her eating the burger at the end. Because <laughs> she's so skinny? It just didn't look right. It just... It's like I mean, Kim Kardashian eating whatever she was eating in the, it in just, the fake meat commercial. Yeah. It just... I With don't no know. no bite marks? Looked... no bite marks on it. I, I did like the movie. I like good. when skinny girls eat junk food. No, I think that's <laughs> nice. Like, it's My, just the way that with her cheeks, it just... How do you fit the food in there? Your, your cheeks yeah. are so hollowed out. Yeah. Talk about fake, like, unrealistic beauty standards. <laughs> it's when, like, like, lingerie and Instagram models post, like, cheat day, and they're eating, like, a bunch of McDonald's or something, and it's, like... A or they don't say cheat day, yeah. and they yeah. just say, this is my average day and in the like, life. And it's like, lying. well, you're also spending yeah. a lot of money on personal trainers and things yeah. like that. And you're lying. They, you if, know, Marvel loves to do that with, um, like, kind of flubby actors. Like, yeah. They did that to Chris Pratt, yeah, like, where they, they take the kind of a him up with chubby HGH. comedy guy and then they they give him like a team of trainers and steroids and they have him work out and get all jacked for a movie I hate that. it's part of the pr for it yeah. you know they did it to kumail nanjiani right oh and yeah, he no, looked was, like he, they his and then he was chin like, was a different i'll he had go a different back face. to being interesting soon as if anyone thought you were interesting in the first place yeah and that was that was the interview when he when he like softened the term he's like it's no longer toxic masculinity now it's just any type of masculinity is bad I, as he looks like he's just juiced to the yeah. Yes, I miss when like Gene Hackman was a leading man, like mm. just a normal schlubby kind of like regular looking dude. See, I'm, I want or, them to all be jacked. I, no. I want them all to look like they're just up to the eyeballs on steroids. But just admit it. Like yeah. if you're going to like if you're going to look like Stallone or Swartz uh, or Arnold or any of these people, I'm fine with that. But just be like, hey, man, got done with work and I don't have a lot of time. I just I take a whole bunch of HGH oh. and. Bruce Willis was a great action movie star yes. and he didn't, he never was, you know, 
a jacked monster. But he looked good bald, which helped. Yeah. I don't understand why the steroids are necessary. I mean, all you need to do with a skinny fat dude is just get him to eat more and lift weights. You don't need to take mm. drugs. I just like, it's okay. about what they eat, not we, eating more. We were talking about James Bond, Pierce yeah. Brosnan. Did Pierce Brosnan ever have a six pack as James Bond? I mean, I don't think I ever remember seeing He never takes it. Right. He's also got like the hairy chest. Yeah. He's, like, he's, he's but got he dad looks bond great. He's believable as yeah. Bond. You don't, he doesn't need to be some sort of, you know, bodybuilder. Ugh, you know so, who they're also trying just, to like astroturf as a sex symbol right now? Uh, Who's Macaulay Culkin's brother? Kieran. Kieran McCulkin. Or they're Rory trying... Culkin. They're both brothers. It's I think it's Kieran. Um, and I remember because he played Roman in Succession. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, they're trying to like astroturf him as like the next uh, unca like uncanny valley sex symbol guy. I mean, he's, he's what do you think the... about him? Does he do it for no, you? No, no, just no. Why? I mean, Why do they have to pick who like, the your most sex disturbing symbol? looking actors to <laughs> astroturf as sex symbols? Or uh, the Pedro like? Pascal slutty daddy. Yeah, that's the I same. don't get it anymore. I don't like the sexualization of, of d the daddy is, w I don't like that. I, I just, uh, that's weird. And the, the people that they pick for like sexiest man of the year or whatever, like what is the, the thought process? Not to put you on the spot, but I am curious who, who your vote is. I don't Who think I have a celebrity symbol. crush. You don't have a sex symbol that you want for the new. I don't have. I don't order. think that. Is that 12? 12. That is wow. 12. Holy. What's the record? 27. 27? Are you yeah. kidding me? Oh my God. Holy. Record's who was on that seven. show to get to 27? Who was on that show? 200th episode. Uh, so oh, it was a landmark. Okay. Landmark episode. Serge Bert, I get it. Yeah. yeah. It was, I think it was Ian and Dane. Okay. Ian and Dane okay. Were on the show. Um, I just I don't know. But to answer, I, I, I think I'm sorry I'm pressing on it, but I am curious. Eyes wide, Bert. Somebody says. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what you got to do. You got to wear a mask to the uh, eyes wide shut yes. mask to dinner along with a chicken hat. <laughs> so That's if we get to twenty. No celebrity crush, Mary. None. I think men are just way more likely to have a celebrity crush. Um, yeah, I've got yeah. many. Uh, yeah. Who's your who? who, oh, who should be I, the I literally symbol? couldn't name them off the top of my oh, head. Oh come um, on! You can't say many and not have um, one. The first one that comes to my mind is Emmanuel Shrieky, who was a, a, a an obscure actress. She's uh, yeah. very she's very oh, that's Bobert. very art house of you. Uh, Lauren lo Lauren Bobert. Lauren, what did you say? Yeah. Lauren Bobert is not. Bobert. She's, <laughs> She is not a, Bert, she's not Bert, a celebrity Bert. in the same way that we're thinking of it here. No. Besides, I would put. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, probably her above. Uh, I mean, I I could, however, go for an hour about political. Like that would be the political great, the, the greatest after show <laughs> that we wouldn't be able to put on uh, the air would be just all of the extremely hilarious, um, kind of sexist conversations about women in politics. But we won't do that here. We're not going to do that here. We would never do that here, and I'm far too polite to do that. Uh huh. I am. Okay. I feel like I I feel like Bert and I have brought down the IQ of the show. <laughs> It wasn't that high in the first place. We don't, we don't aim for high IQ. We aim for fun. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, we did bring that. Up. We soften we soften stupid and make it fun. Yeah. That's, that's like, is the show dumb? No, it's not dumb. It's it's fun. I do don't think let, the height of comedy is the naked gun movies. Don't let stupid be the enemy of fun. Yeah. Like, somebody stupid says Stacey good. Dash yes. in the chat. Stacey Dash is kind of a, a weird. She's, she was from Clueless. She's played Dion. We need a in grassroots Clueless. movement right. to tell Stacy Dash to guest on the show. Yep. By the uh, way, oh, we've got another big super chat from Trudy Jones. Said Bert is my celebrity crush. Thank you, thank Ooh. you, thank you. you I'm flattered. Are you gonna put that on a on a poster somewhere? Bert to, is my yeah. celebrity crush. Yeah. Celebrity. <laughs> celebrity. Oh. Oh. My God. oh. Incredible. Incredible. <laughs> How does it work with so many things? Uh, I don't know. It's a verb. It's a perhaps. noun. It's an adverb, adjective. It's whatever you want. Whatever. Right. It's a way of life. We've got like a landfill let's of just super go. chats to pick through <laughs> okay. still. Let's uh, let's go for it. Okay. I was hoping to get a segment out of that one, but alas. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Nebnap said, final chat. I've just purchased the book too. Thank you, Nebnap. Shout out to Pudding. Yeah, Pudding is yeah. the real king. <laughs> Sketch Therapy said, if paid audience was pulled, who are you here to see? Baby Yoda would get paid more than Pedro and all these <laughs> bitches. <laughs> what about on screen FX character pay equality? Let's rock their boat. Watch them implode. It's true. It is just a hand puppet. Mm -hmm. But the puppets here deserve the pay. Show. See, I just want to do a whole episode now talking about hot Hollywood women. I'm sorry. I'm watching the chat hey. and they're... 
And Boy, they're talking boys. about, and they're and they're listing. They're like Emily Blunt, Marissa Tomei is still. Uh, Marissa Tomei still does it. Th there's an amazing meme that came out uh, when Spider Man No Way Home came uh -huh. out. That was it was of Tobey Maguire's oh, yeah. Spider Man, <laughs> and it says like when she's Aunt May, but not your Aunt May. Yeah. And he's doing the, and he's doing the dance from Spider Man Three, and it's extremely yep. creepy. And uh, uh, it's they're like, probably close in age though, right? Tobey uh, Maguire, Marissa Tomei. Probably, yeah. yeah. Uh, within ten years, probably. Um. No, they'd be closer to 20. They'd said, probably be 15 years apart. I meant to say paying audience. Sorry, typo. Mm -hmm. You're forgiven. Um, Nasta B said, shout out to the new awesome independent animated pilot on YouTube, Lackadaisy. You guys rock. Thanks for helping the time pass at work. That's what it's all about. Being able to like yeah. have people listen while they're working. That's yeah. that or like working out or like uh, mm -hmm. if you go on bike rides or something like that. It's like for, for a long time, I was like super poor and couldn't afford streaming services, but I always kept YouTube premium so that I could, you know, have the app closed and not have to have it like actually on mm -hmm. your phone. Yeah. Dude, when I'm cooking dinner, that's like my favorite time. Oh, yeah. Throw yeah. a podcast that's on. That's when I listen to all my pods. Yeah. Paul's and the kids said 10 parties and Bert buys his cultists Bert stickers. Oh, my God. Yes, we do have limited edition Bert stickers uh, in the merch store. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Pick He's him already up. Already shilling. He's Pick already grifting. People Show. keep mentioning uh, uh, Anna De Armas now too. So oh, she's a big name. Well, the yes. thing is, every yes. pretty much every female celebrity is a celebrity crush. Not the same for men. Thirteen. Thirteen. Jeez. Thank you guys. Like Margot Robbie is beautiful in the most like Hollywood way. Classic Hollywood. Like classic Hollywood. Be she is Jenna Pre uh, J Jenna Presley. She's a lot of uh, uh, Maggie, not Maggie Grace, kind of Maggie Grace too. Even in a way, they kind of have the same look. But the the girl from um, Death on the Nile, uh, Emma Mackey. Like they, they they basically look the exact same. Look up look on that look up on that laptop. Look up a picture of Emma Mackey and okay, just tell me it okay. doesn't just look like uh, Margot Robbie. There are a lot of celebrity do doppelgangers because there are only oh, yeah, so no, many ways to is, be attractive. Uh, yeah. Huh. Because attractiveness is an objective metric. Bobcat said, all hail the great Bert. <laughs> this feels blasphemous almost. You know, a couple have been like, I don't, I don't feel comfortable yeah, laughing at this one. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. Appreciate it. That means the power hasn't corrupted you yet. No, no, no. I would also add Piper Parabu to that list of attractive gotta... female celebrities. Coyote You're Ugly. Just... Coyote Ugly oh. and, and Covert Affairs. Piper Marabu? Parabu. Parabu. P-E-R-A. Oh, -E Andrew Gleespin said, Bert is the way. I am the head of the F Bert I, and this is the future. <laughs> FBI, Federal Berto of Information. <laughs> Bert. <laughs> <laughs> Corn Pop said, Mary is a diamond in the rough. Two eye emojis. There you go. <laughs> uh, okay. Dash Fortune said, Lynx are always superior as they have the novelty of being Rickrolled. Ah, for like when mm -hmm. I was talking about when I was posting GIF memes, uh, I was what? talking about uh, I, earlier in the chat, I said I, I proved that I'm one of the, 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 the people by not posting GIFs that are the actual GIFs. You post the link instead of the GIF. Because like only a certain like pay grade, like pay amount in the chat, right, is allowed to post gifts. Uh, yeah, it's the hmm. elite members. They yeah. can post. They can actually like um hi like they're not hyperlinked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they actually appear in the yeah. chat. But if yeah. you were, if you want to be a man of the people, you post them with the the hyperlinks so that you can feel like one of the. Exactly. The... If you want to be a man of Bert. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Hey. 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 She just did something. <laughs> my, she's been doing stuff all day. Those are my thing. socials, though. Do the thing. Man of Bert. Man of Bert. Man of Bert. At Man of Bert. At Man of Bert. Yeah. Somebody mentioned Follow. Elizabeth Banks when she was on Scrubs. Are we talking Elizabeth Banks from yes. like yes and y'all showgirls? Yes. Elizabeth. Oh no, I'm thinking of Elizabeth Berkeley. Yes, you are thinking Berkeley? of Elizabeth Berkeley. Berkeley. Yeah. Berkeley. We got another one. <laughs> David Shimke said, "May Bert be with you. Send prayers for my dad. He's getting brain surgery today. Love you all. Warrior Multimedia is Bert Military Propaganda." Oh yeah, shout out to Warrior Multimedia. Oh. You know, prayers for your dad, buddy. Yep. Yeah. Um, what was the next one? Tony Ty said Christina Aguilera was also in the Mickey Mouse Club. I didn't know that. Yep. Yeah. Potatoes for Seamus said, there. Bertman, give it to me, Bertie. <laughs> a bunch of potato emojis and taco emojis. They've been making some really spicy ones that I've been like, I don't know if I want to touch those <laughs> ones. <laughs> um, Bobcat said, how many crisis parties to get married to join the Discord? 
You, do and... you understand how many people want you and Hannah Claire on it? Yeah, but that's the thing, right? Yeah. It's Once like... you give it to them. <laughs> Yeah. It's like a dog chasing know. a car. What yeah. are they going to do with it? After? Over the years, being an e girl, a lot of people ask you to join Discord, and you got to just say no. <laughs> just say, say no. no to do you, Discord. Would, you would call yourself an e girl? Yeah. What is an e girl? I mean, it's the definition of it is it's you're just a girl online. Oh, you know? okay. I feel like a boomer right now. Yeah, I, um, that was a very boomer question. <laughs> Potatoes for Seamus said, Hi, Mary, guest Burtman, and Brent, tacos for Mary. Uh, thanks for the tacos. Oh, I'm going to end the poll right now, guys. Uh, <laughs> I, I put the poll up there. I said, what should they serve for lunch at Donda Academy? And the, the answer then? is sushi with 29%. Burgers comes in second with 26%. Tacos third and pizza fourth. Frankly, those results didn't go the way I thought they would go. I thought burgers would end up last. Burgers? Burgers. <laughs> burgers. Exactly. You, should, you should start your own burger joint. <laughs> Somebody also mentioned Tara Reed when she was on Scrubs. Also yes. when she was in Van Wilder. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wasn't she in Road Trip too? And Denise so. Richards yeah. when she was in The World Is Not Enough. One of the mm -hmm. best. Christmas uh, when she plays. See, I'm just saying, like the celebrity crush shit is like men. That's a male. Like it's women a don't do teenager, this. Teenager, teenage male. Women thing. don't sit around and be like, oh, when Leonardo DiCaprio was oh, in come this on. or whatever. Like, women in I the just, 90s did. No. Oh, for okay, in the nineties maybe, but it's yes. still it's just like we don't Especially uh, Leo. He's kinda cute, I'm not yeah, gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. If anything, they're like Titanic Adam Driver. Oh, oh. <laughs> Women like when a guy's yeah, Adam a little Driver's bit ugly. Not very attractive. Women like it when not, a guy's a no. little bit ugly. They do. Okay. Really? Do you, oh, I'm in, do you dude. think Adam Driver's a sexy? I didn't know I, I had such an advantage. That's what I'm saying. I didn't know I had such an advantage. Women like Adam Driver. Really? Because he's a little bit Ugly. Yeah. Attainable. So pool. so a little ugly, but the personality is on point? Is that the key? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Yeah, so I don't think personality makes up for that much. Crappy personality? Yeah. It's just that <laughs> he looks like he should be ugly, but yeah. isn't to them, you know? He has Dark, that actually makes sense. Yeah. Dark Infinity says women all wanted Brad Pitt back in the day. Well, they He's, still do. Brad Pitt, is, I will die on this hill. Brad Pitt is not attractive. What? It's just a fact. I think you had to see him in fight <laughs> He looks club. like a little girl. Not in Fight what? Club, he didn't. Okay. It would have been Once Upon a Time in America. You, nothing? I don't think he's attractive. Wow. Hollywood. Mary, you are like just full of hot takes. That's <laughs> what she's known for. Maybe you're into Brad Pitt. I, I, well, I, maybe I am. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, Linda Bean said, hostage, hostage birdie. Enjoy your dinner and chicken hat. We are essentially oh, in a bit of a hostage uh, birdie right now. Yeah. Yeah. Where Jeremy take your wife? said, I don't know. Those who can burt, those who can't do taxes. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. You hear that, half Armenian Charles? Oh, Charles is just seething right now. He is. Tell. He He's is. Uh, I might have forgot to shout this one out earlier, but it's a $20 super chat from Neaver. No message. Thank you. Thank you. Luis Aguilar said, Hot Cheeto Finger Girls love Carol G. Okay. <laughs> 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 I feel like this is not a touching that one. California reference. I'm not sure I understand it. No, I, right, is I, it the I, same girls that wore the Cookie Monster pajama pants we, to school? No, we're, we're right next to Mexico. Let's put it that way. No. Yeah. Okay. Um, the girls uh, who like set their baby hairs with Vaseline. Oh. You know, you I'm, know the type. I'm leaving this one alone. Okay. Um, Neaver said I had a joke with my twenty dollars, but YouTube didn't send it with the super chat. The Burt of Monte Cristo. Ah, that's a Jim Caviezel <laughs> movie as well. Yeah, I uh, I bought tickets to that and then went into Black Hawk Down. I good, remember. Good, good yeah, choice. I remember. Good choice. Potatoes right. for Seamus said, Burtman is my everything. Burt on you guys. <laughs> Thank you, potatoes. <laughs> potatoes. Burt on. Potatoes for Seamus said, serious question for Brent. Who is Julia Fox? <laughs> Uh, dude, at this point, I'm not even going to dignify that joke of a question with an answer. <laughs> Everyone here, somebody else said it earlier about something else we were covering. Like, they, uh, they go in, they comment on some video. When we talk about it, we're like, who is this person? I'm like, I don't know. Watch the video. You might find out. I don't know, <laughs> dude. Something surprised me. I saw a Twitter thread of, like, post your celebrity crushes. Like, men, post your celebrity uh -huh. crushes. And some people were posting Julia Fox. Was I wouldn't she... have expected that. Mm -hmm. You don't um, care for her. Well, she bleaches her eyebrows. Oh, that's that's uh, that's a look. Yeah. She's also just weird yeah. looking. Well, you don't like artsy. Yes, that's that's true. It's like, uh, it's you don't really... like art. You don't like people who like art. I don't. Yeah, I'm just. 
I'm just an all-around bat, like horrible so person to be around. I'm not trying to be a dick. I am definitely I'm a Philistine. Just, uh, I'm on your show, That's and okay. I feel like I'm being kind of <laughs> no. gracious. No, you're okay. This guest therapy said, "Why don't you have YouTube memberships? IRL does." That is a good question that I keep meaning to address. Kind of shady. I have not. Uh, I have not IRL done. does. That was yeah. I'm not sure how I feel no. about that. It's okay. Um, we've thought about it. I just don't know if we should or not. Steve Ryman said, we are the BERT, disarm your weapons and prepare for assimilation. Your biological and technological distinctiveness will be added to our own. Wow. Resistance is futile. What is love? <laughs> Baby, don't BERT me. <laughs> they made a Terminator meme. It was my face, the BERTinator. <laughs> <laughs> the BERT Borg is good. I like the BERT Borg. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, Jerry Ryan. She's still smoking hot. I, I, yeah, she's like, she's yeah. getting older now. But yeah. uh, her and uh, uh, Jennifer Beals, not Jessica Beals, Jennifer Beals. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep doing I this. say this with literally no contempt in my heart, but it always is just like funny to me how men are, are constantly just aghast at like women's beauty. It's kind of like cute. Yeah, men are you know? dumb. We're, we're like not... they're constantly actually surprised that a hot woman is hot. It's like, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Men aren't, we're not smart. No. No. We're yeah. animals. Basically. We're laughing about I'm not more... saying that. You're yeah. saying that. I, yeah. No, I, I, I as say a that man, with, with as, no as a man, insulting I agree. tone yeah. whatsoever. <laughs> I'm just, Tony Ty said, brains. <laughs> serious question for Potatoes for Seamus. Who is Brent? That's a very That's good, a good question. question. That's somebody should answer that one. I know as well. who Brent is. Yeah. <laughs> Seth Essington said, it said Hey, Birdalicious. <laughs> Uh, it's like it's, it's like it's Fergalicious. It's like Fergalicious mm -hmm. from Fergie. That's good. Fergalicious, yeah. Def. You should you should you should make a music video of that. Fergalicious. Yes. Steve we could Ryman something. said, "Women don't have celebrity crushes. That's why groupies and Twilight moms are totally not a thing. Yeah. They go so far as to throw undies on stage, Mary." Yeah, I mean, I do have the what the there's the video they, of they the. Do. It's more of like a social contagion than them actually being into the. Mary, are you? Do you go to a lot of concerts? I mean, a lot yeah. of yeah, dude. I mean, it's that video of the the lead singer of Muse is walking the long path up to the front of the stage, yeah. and he's literally just being hit endlessly with panties. Have you ever seen it's the? It's not uh, that I think women don't have celebrity crushes. I just think men are way more likely to have them. Yeah, I think that. Um, yeah, that's probably true. But women at I, concerts. Yeah, have you ever seen? I the, actually, I don't think guys would ever clarify it as a crush. I think it would. They would just say this woman's hot, and then yeah. You're gone. Have, like, have you ever seen the, the any of the Rolling the Stones documentaries is, from the seventies? Mm -hmm. There's I, the one that's not like allowed, but you know you see them carting off groupies onto the plane. It's Joel D. Yeah. Valdez says Burt back better. You know the one I'm talking about. Burt back better. Yeah. yeah, make America Burt again. Yes. <laughs> Put it on a hat. <laughs> uh, Brett ain't dead. Said Matt just ordered House of Fire. This Burt cult is sick. I, in a good way or a bad way no he I shout out he, to red ain't dead that dude he made a website i hate bert.com it's the funniest thing really? I, I i almost wait i'm no, looking it's this hilarious up right we need to please god i it. hate i hate bert.com Bert. please don't say you changed the website in between this time but oh, wow <laughs> i'm gonna check it's amazing and also thank you so much for buying the book i i i'm indebted to the uh the bert society <laughs> f Ber brett <laughs> Look this up right now. <laughs> uh, send me the link. It's IHateBert.com. There's a tour? That's insane. Just spell <laughs> Just IHateBert.com. Oh, you did a lot of dates in 2019. Ah! Why is this a thing? Just scroll down, scroll down. Nah, I, I'm putting it on screen. Ah! Listen now? <laughs> You need help. What's this all no to Bert? They just started putting my face on everything. They put it on the it's, Cupid. This is F you, Bert. <laughs> Audio, stream music in, in playlists with SoundCloud. Oh. And, and wow, is the, there's an actual I, photo gallery? Dude, That's I cool. want shirts of this. This is hilarious. I, I love this. Oh my God. Bread ain't dead. Oh, it's, it's his own music. It's his own music. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. But just the fact that he made the website was like, dude. Oh I mean, my God! Yeah, be, everyone has to be passionate about something. He's going on tour. <laughs> this guy was like, "Web design is my passion." <laughs> also hating Bert. <laughs> Amazing. It's the funniest thing I've ever. And seen. I believe there's one more there, Mary. High Voltage seventy five said, "Welcome to Bertville, population you." Hell yeah! Uh, guys, go to and also go to ihatebert.com. It seems to link to his SoundCloud. 
Okay. Uh, they're, they're talking about it. So good for him. And that's some fantastic viral marketing. That oh, he's my doing God. Right there. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, Matt, my friend, thank you so much. Thank for you guys us today. for having me. This was great. I had a lot of I had a lot of fun. Let everyone know where they can find you. And then shill one more I'm time. Shill, shill, uh, shill, shill. Please buy my book. It's on Amazon. It's you can also just go to my website, matchabat.com. The House on Fire. Uh, you can also get Barnes and Noble. And you can follow me everywhere at Match A Bat and check out my work at Free the People, freethepeople.org. So, Perfect. Right on. All right, cult leader. Time to time <laughs> to give everyone your creds. Let everyone know they can find you. Uh, I'm Chris Bertman. I am on Discord, uh, the Timcast Discord. Um, man, I forgot everything I was going to say. Go to uh, follow me at Twitter, Instagram, at Man of Bert, go to... Oh, I'm also a writer, by the way, for Timcast. Yes. I forgot about that. Uh, go <laughs> there to is Tim a reason Cast. you're here. <laughs> There's a reason I got hired. It wasn't for Discord, but um, yeah, go to timcast.com, click the read tab. You can find all the articles from uh, myself, Hannah Claire, um, Adrian, everybody. So thank you guys. It was great. Matt? Thank you. Oh, you can read. Oh, uh, read, read review. the review yes. of Matt's book. And yeah. Yes. Make sure you pick up a copy of Matt's book. It's fantastic. Um, it's really cathartic in like a post COVID world. Mm -hmm. Amazing stuff. Thank you. All right. Mary, where awesome. can they find you? you can oh, send there's me... one more. There's one more super uh -oh. chat there from Gordon oh, Shumway. Gordon Shumway said, Mary, women totally have celeb crushes. Teen Beat and Tiger Beat mags back in the day mostly had guys on them. Let's not also forget boy bands every decade has them. Also, is like, is this in a world now where like, uh, like all of the sexuality that Hollywood puts out is ambiguous and nobody knows what the hell anything means anymore? You just can't have your typical crushes. Like we said before, Justin Bieber was like the last straight male that was allowed to yeah. be like a big, uh, like you know, musician before they all had to become like weirdly sexual, like ambiguous. an idol. <laughs> yeah, and then now mm -hmm. they have to be Korean and. Were you into like Backstreet Boys or NSYNC or any of that stuff? That would have been way after. Uh, yeah, that was uh, way after me. I, but I was into before, Backstreet Boys before yeah. you. Yeah. I yeah, I liked Justin Bieber. Um, okay. uh, <laughs> I guess my point here is like it's a different. Uh, because why were the boys on on the front of Tiger Beat? It's because you had like a bunch of articles that could let you like mythologize about their personality. I say. <laughs> it's not like, it, I don't know. It's just like, it's not just Justin Bieber being cute that girls liked him, you know? You're telling me that all those girls screaming at a Justin Bieber concert did so because they, they thought highly about his views on sociopolitical issues? No. Okay. Why, 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 okay, so so why do the girls the parasocial who, relationships okay. yeah. with the the idols? All right. Yeah, the person in chat didn't say Teen Vogue. Okay, they yeah. didn't shout. Teen yeah, Vogue that would have been Teen different. Vogue started that. <clears throat> yeah. um, what, what what would Marx think of your lip gloss? <laughs> well, Marx thinks a lot of your lip gloss. Yeah. They say so all the time in <laughs> Teen Vogue. That's their they they love commies over there. Okay, all right, signing tell everyone off. No. <laughs> <laughs> you can send me validation on Instagram at Mary Archived, or you can send me hate on Twitter. That is also Mary Archived. And I hope you guys all have a happy Easter weekend. Guys, before we go, hit the like button on this video. Subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you'd like to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at Brett Dasovic on both. You can also listen to this podcast, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, and Spotify. We are here Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is noon Pacific. And if you'd like to follow Pop Culture Crisis on social media, we are on Twitter, at Pop Culture underscore show, Facebook and TikTok, at Pop Culture Crisis, and on Instagram, at Pop Culture Crisis Pod. We will be back with another episode on Monday. We'll see you then, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.